And I um, got the show, you know, the first show. <clears throat> and they said, well, what kind of father are you going to be? And I said, well, I'm going to be a father that is not going to go easy on the kids. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be wrong, and I'm going to be wrong loud. You know, like uh, I said one time, don't you have pictures of our, where, where do you have the baby pictures of our kids? I said, I don't have those in here. Those kids look like Martians. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabes que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of things to do. Thing I got to go to that dry cleaner. Ahí. My kid fell. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neil Spore and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Bye. Oh, my God. Hi. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month, no matter what you're into. Their box of awesome has you covered, and you can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up for boxofawesome.com and enter the code OMGHI at checkout. Listen, I got that carry-on that I got from these guys, and it was amazing, made it easier for me to travel, and I would welcome a box of awesome any month. Hey, everybody, this is producer Grant here. Just a reminder, if you like the show, if you're enjoying the show, please like, comment, subscribe on any platform you're checking it out on, whether that's on YouTube, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anything. Any engagement that we have really, really helps. We all serve the almighty algorithm these days, and any amount that you sort of interact with the show in any way just really helps us out, helps us get cooler guests for the show, helps raise the profile for the show, helps give us more content for you guys to enjoy. So thanks again for checking it out, and please enjoy the episode. So, um, yeah. who, what what young man do we have here? Yeah, uh, joining us today on the podcast, we have comedian Vince Caldera. Yeah, hey, it's so great to <laughs> thank you for having me here. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, where are you in your in your in your career? Yeah, in, no, I, I've been doing stand up for like a little uh, around like eight to nine years now, and I'm uh, in a place right now where I'm gonna uh, record my first ever stand up album and okay. stand up special. And uh, so I, I've been like working on, on developing my hour and everything, and I'm actually going to record it in May. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All right, like, fuck it, the get, ghost in Miss Muir, cabrona. <laughs> you ever you know what that show is? No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it is? No. It's a dude that Mrs. Muir bought a house like a, a, on the edge of some island, and it had a, a like a you know lighthouse, and she yeah. would see the ghost. So the mm-hmm. the ghost of the captain. Yeah. So it was like the ghost and Mrs. Muir. <laughs> I don't know why he just seemed like a ghost walking, walking in. <laughs> What's that on your uh, chest right there? Your fucking, uh, it's just lunch number to go dating viejas <laughs> yeah, on the side? Right. The date? I see a 222. Two, 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 two. P222. Yeah. Prostate. The 222. Two, 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 <laughs> two fingers in the front, two of the. Three in the back. Three in the back. <laughs> Shit. I just come back from getting a CAT scan. That's where I was at. And what happened? Well, they said that. I think Dennis Miller had the best uh, line about cat scan. He goes, you know, out here actors put down a cat scan as work, you know, like, <laughs> as, as film. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cheers. I hope, I hope you're, uh, you know, we've got to wish each other the best because one day they're going to be a They did. They gave me a result right away. Like they, instantly? They, yeah. They gave me a, it's a new machine. Yeah. It's a, it's a new machine. The doctor says it's great. It works good. And is it, that what he said? He said yeah. the machine is great and that it works good? Yeah, except for it breaks down. It's a new invention, but oh. it breaks down all the time. But How it, do you know it's, that it didn't break down on yours? No, because this, the film got up to the doc, doctor's office, was upstairs. They did it downstairs, went upstairs. Doctor says, hey, let's look at it. Brings it up electronically on the screen. You want to know when you're not in good condition, when the guy's like, yeah, man, you know, I'm a huge fan. I mean, it's funny that you're in here. I mean, it's just such an easy procedure. Yeah. Hey, what's the matter, dude? Oh, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I'm still a fan. I'm gonna head out. Uh, somebody will be coming in to talk to you, like, uh, because you know when they see something. Oh yeah. They're they're not really paid to be, demu- you know, like a yeah. do- other doctor would say. That's, there's something within the margins I don't like. Yeah. You got some fucking cholo. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, with the with the, the scrubs like seven times too big. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. What's the matter? I'm not fuck. <laughs> he walks out down the hall, the door's going, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I'm funny. Hey, uh, my associate came in here and was talking to you. He said uh, he had some concern. I don't know. Anything, he just kept saying, fuck. Yeah. So, so Gil is a huge fan of uh, comedy. Hey, how you doing, Gil Crew? Hey, this is a young you. man right here. But this is like, uh, you know, like uh, a little cartoon sketch that you might. Yeah. Who do they say? Sherman? No, which is the other one? Is it the uh, Alfred Newman? That guy from Mad <laughs> yeah. TV or something? Yeah. I've gotten that before. Yeah, yeah. But do you think it's good to look like a cartoon? I think you know. I think when your face has, like my, you know, they draw me all the time. I mean, yeah, that's, there you yeah. go. I've seen some fucking bad. Have you seen some bad drawings of yourself? Oh, for sure. Like you go like the boardwalk and they do the caricatures, <laughs> and you're like, it makes you feel so insecure. Like I paid twenty dollars to make you make me feel bad I'm about right, myself. I know. You know? It's not like they can even say, like, man, you know, I don't have to do this dude like that. They're like, Shit, that I laugh at myself all the time it's anyway. It's $10 a sketch. I'm a fucking artist. $10. You know what, motherfucker? You see your fucking nose? Watch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brian was, uh, one time Brian was at uh, at Disneyland, and there was a, a, a woman that was holding a baby, but the baby's head was facing Brian. He was in line. So the baby got up, and then the baby was like this, and the baby says, that guy's got a nose like a witch. <laughs> <laughs> and, he was with some, and he was with some girl, and the fucking thing's like looking down, and she, you know, it's like, oh, uh, the fucking baby put the savage. fucking savage on you. And you think about that for the rest of the day. Like, that's all you're going to oh, think about man. when you go home, your car ride and everything. And you're like, let's take a picture. He's like, no, <laughs> I'm good. Let's get a picture of ourselves here. All right. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, do you have a name for the? How do? You, how how would you name your special? Like, yeah, no, uh, that's. Uh, that, I felt like that was also like a really hard part in, in the whole like creation yeah. process. I I, I want to call it up and coming. Uh, you know, because like a lot of people when they they like they see a comic, they say like this person's up and coming. Uh -huh. that, 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 I think there's some porn. See them any porno movies? Like oh that? sure, <laughs> up and coming. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but, but it's also in reference to the neighborhood that I live in, you know, because like right now it's going through a lot of changes and it's being gentrified. And so I oh. felt like there was like a double entendre and like up and coming as a stand up and then up and coming as, as my neighborhood, you know. So um, it's about it's a stand up comedy documentary and special. OK, we're, we're going to come up with an, our own versions of names in this, I would love that. In this time that we're here. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, um, did you did your neighborhood get gentrified? No. Did they have? Did you? Did, does your does your neighborhood have to have stores around it, or just the homes are being lived in by other people? I think it's like a, a like a mix of like you see like homes are, are changing like the like the str like certain architecture you'll be like oh this is different than what we're used to and also like certain businesses like there's like a cheese store nearby and like we never had like a like yeah. an artisanal yeah. cheese store before. Yeah. Residents moving out. Business is coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, residents whole, are moving out. The, so, the vehicles that are dying and yeah, then the family selling the house. Exactly. And because business is buying everything up to change the face of the neighborhood. Yeah. And But that hasn't happened uh, where I grew up. So there. Where, where My daughter live? lives in the house that I grew up in. You, yeah. Right now. Is that is that house going to stay in the family? Yeah. If nobody will sell it? I don't think she'll sell it now. I, I don't know. I don't. I really don't have any attachment to the house anymore. You know, it's, you don't feel an attachment to the house? No, not, not at that all. growing up in there as a little boy. You go over there no, and you'll see not yourself. At all. I, I I have more attachment to the street where we drew the baseball diamond in, in, in the dead end right there <laughs> the than I do to the house. That was you know there was at one time there was I had six six sisters and there were survive? five five sisters still living there when I what were the sleeping I, arrangements. Very tight. I mean, because it's not a big house, <laughs> yeah. right? Probably a two-bedroom two, track home. Three, three bedroom. Uh huh. Uh, we were social climbers coming from 94th and Avalon over to Pico Rivera. Then it was just Pico, and so we went there. Two of my adult, two of the oldest sisters, they were already gone. So then that meant uh, Patsy, Sylvia, uh, myself, and then I had two younger sisters, Yoli and Cindy. And then for the most of the time, it became uh, four girls and myself. Was so it fun? I didn't care. I didn't think about it. You know, that was family. I didn't when know anything. You, when you different. came home from school, did your mom have food food there waiting, or did your no, mom? No, my mom was working. My mom was working. My dad was working. 
Uh, and so when it was myself and my younger sister, so I was the cook. I was, yeah. you know, I took care of them. Did your Did your parents? Did you grow up with your mom and dad? I grew up with my grandparents, uh, so they raised me. My parents were like kind of in and out because they were like incarcerated pretty often. My, my parents like lived like this sort of like gangster lifestyle and everything, so they were like out and about doing that stuff. Were they in gangs? Uh, they they were like in gangs and stuff like that. So I grew up in Glasshole Park over in Northeast Los Angeles. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, while, while they were out, my grandparents would take care of me. They were super overprotective. Like my grandma didn't like me going out with people that she didn't know, right? She'd always watch like the Spanish news and that would just like give her like perpetual yeah. fear all the time. And it's louder than regular news. It's, it's also <laughs> scarier than regular news. It's like a tel- telenovela like all the time. Um, you know, it, remember that, remember there was a guy protesting like healthcare on the freeway? Yeah. And he had his dog in the car with him? And he was sitting in there, and he had gas. He had a pickup truck. He stopped, and he was in the car, and they were trying to talk to him, but he had gas in the car. He had a dog in there, and he was in there. And eventually, the fumes, you know, are so much that if you even open the door or anything clicks or anything sparks, it's going to boom. It boomed, and the ca- the helicopter looked away. I put it on Channel 34. They had the oh, dude yeah. with his arms <laughs> out. Yeah. Yeah. And they zoom in. You can see the guy. Ah, the fucking dog jumped in. Uh, hey, man's yeah, best friend. Yeah. That fucking dog got the fuck out of yeah. here. He looked like a, like a cracker when he jumped. He didn't move. You know, you had like a cracker just still. He jumped out of the back window like that and that motherfucker was in one piece. Like he was just took off. That guy was in there and, and they showed everything. They don't hold back oh, yeah. at all. They, oh. they don't. No, I think they they understand this is what the people want to see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't give a shit about your feelings. Yeah. This is what they want to see. Hey, were you ever in the car? Is that where your comedy comes from? Like, you ever in the car when your when your mom and dad were in there? Like, yeah, I was in the car when like my mom and dad would get like into street fights and stuff like that. Like at gas stations, like at restaurants wow. and stuff like that. So like there was once a, a street fight at a gas station. My mom was fighting this woman on Thanksgiving. And while she was fighting, <laughs> yeah. How come why were they just wanted to go get gas on Thanksgiving? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. We weren't going anywhere, but we had the urge to go get gas in the get morning. Gas. <laughs> they will come and have some hey, pie. Like, hey, and here's the stuffing. Let's <laughs> yeah. see that still have stuffing on. So, so she's fighting uh, this woman at the gas station, right? And there's no one to watch. But how did it start? Like, they were putting gas. And like, hey, what the fuck are you looking at? It was at? this woman that she just had beef with, like, in the neighborhood. Like, oh, you have, so like, a person. Each other? Yeah. yeah, they knew each other. And so she's going to fight them, but she's realizing, oh, my kid's in the car. So she asked the gas station attendant to watch me while she fought. And this dude comes Jeez. over, oh. is just watching me. And then I can just hear my mom yelling out like every expletive I could think of. And he's like, so how's school been? And I'm like, I'm hearing my mom <laughs> beat up a woman right now. Shit. You yeah, your mom could throw, could throw hands? She could throw hands, dude. She was like also like a very arrogant fighter. Like I swear, whenever my mom would beat someone up, because we lived in such a small neighborhood, she would drive to that person's house the next day, and as loud as possible, she would play the song "Move, Bitch, Get Out the Way." <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, and I know that because like I was the person to give her the CD to play it. You know, I'd always be late to school and everything. So I'll, she had she threw she threw chingas, yeah, but had a yeah. soundtrack. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that, she, it's just like boxers now coming out with your soundtrack. I, I'm almost afraid to ask. Where's your mom at now? Uh, my mom, my mom's around. Uh, she was like gone for a little bit, but I'm happy to have her back in my life. Yeah, oh, yeah. good, good. And like I've been trying to like reconnect with my family, with my parents parents especially because I felt like there was so much like missing time in between and I feel like I'm taking my parents on field trips and stuff like that like things that we were never really able to do yeah like I took my parents to like the aquarium of the Pacific and they tripped out on seeing all the <laughs> fish the man. <laughs> they're like because they never seen that shit huh? yeah they, well our, our like neighborhood I went to the same uh, elementary school middle school yeah, yeah, and everything yeah. as them and oh. they, we didn't have a lot of good field trips so I'm trying to take them on those good field trips <laughs> and I'm like yeah there's like 27,000 species of fish and my dad's like man trip out He's just like staring down all the fish and stuff. In the tank. I bet you that yeah. fish is bad, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the little one looks like a bad fish. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just hearing him say trip out like 30 times on like the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they would say trip out, trip out. <laughs> Man, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to be able to, to do that right now in my life. Did, did, when you guys were estranged, was it because of the lifestyle, or she was she was away, or uh, she was away for a little bit, and then like just just different parts, you know, like they're in and out of jail a lot. I'm the oldest of four, so I had to like really come into a position where I had to take care of my siblings, right? So um. I wouldn't have been good at that, man. Because I'm an only child. I'm calzón todo cagado. fucking two, two different colored socks. Yeah. Like, hey, man, you're fucking son. Fuck you, man. Take this with a hole in them. Yeah. Shit that no kids would, would, 
would go to school like I'm not going to. I have two different socks. You're going to school with fucking three different socks. I got a fuck. <laughs> my you sister know? still yeah, tells no. me today she hated because I took care of my two younger sisters, yeah. and she says I can still remember the day you making us eat raw pancakes. <laughs> eat them. That's the way they're supposed to be. <laughs> <I don't have laughs> yeah, that's how I make them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. And and uh, uh, how how did um, I mean? It's interesting, man. How how people find you know find comedy. Yeah. Like, what were you into? Did you draw, or did you like music, or did you try to play an instrument in school, or your friends, or what? Or what? It's so funny because like I, I feel like I didn't really grow up in, an, in a household that was expressive of ideas. You know, it was no one like that could ever be like, oh yeah, go go paint or go do this, and you can end up somewhere like a museum or whatever, right? Right. right. Um, when my parents were away, my grandparents would take care of me, and like late at night, I'd watch TV because they'd fall asleep like crazy early, like seven, right? <laughs> and so I'd watch like the channels that would turn into like a completely different network at nighttime. And so I saw Comedy Central, and I saw my first comedian, and I was like, oh, people can just talk, and wow. people will laugh at that. And the first comic I saw was Maria Bamford, and that became like my first comedian, like my favorite comic to watch. And then I, was, I started watching it more like in secrecy. My grandparents didn't know what the fuck was happening yeah. when they were talking about, they just thought it was like an infomercial or something, right? Right, right, right. Uh, and then from there, I would just like kind of keep on watching it while they'd fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. Grandpa, when your grandparents raise you, my grandparents a, used to watch Lucha Libre. You know, they used to watch, <laughs> they used, you know, they, they watched wrestling, they thought it was real. And they would get mad. Mr. Moto, the destroyer, they thought it was real. And they'd get pissed off at the shit. So my grandmother told me that the Pantera Negra, the Black Panther, yeah, yeah. was her brother. I don't know. And that <laughs> he lost one time and she jumped in the ring and hit somebody with her, with her shoe because they were choking him. And I don't know. <laughs> you don't know if that shit's true. I mean, yeah. and they had a picture of him, you know, with the, the black and white with the sh shorts and, you know, yeah. like that. But I, I don't, I mean. Bo both I, my grandparents loved wrestling and they'd get mad. They believed it was true, but they were divorced. You know, they didn't live with each other. They hated each other. Matter of fact, when I was in the army, my mom told me one time, she's crying on the phone. I said, what's wrong? She says, I found out I was a bastard. My grandma and my grandpa never got married. Oh. They just lived with it. And then I found out that my grandfather had kids all over the Southwest. He was a traveling man. <laughs> oh, he had different families? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I couldn't have had another family. I, he was, I wasn't he, into yeah. the one that I had. <laughs> he, a lot of work. he was it's in the United States. Be. He was, uh, I found out, very proud. He was a villista. He came to the U.S. running from the Federales through Chihuahua into uh, New Mexico. Went through Texas and New Mexico, and that's where he settled. He was just had my mom. Culeando every, every, everywhere. Everywhere he put his hat. That, that's right. Every he took his hat off huh? and followed it. Everywhere he put his huh? hat was his home. <laughs> Fucking getting it off. Oh, you see his hat on the hall. Oh, let's not go. His hat's off. You know? <laughs> that's the sock on the door, you know. <laughs> if you see my fucking hat on that chair, you better not come in here. What, what kind of stuff did your family like to watch when, when you were uh, growing up? You know, my grandmother was a racist, so uh -huh. we watched Lawrence Welk, and when Arthur Duncan would dance, she would go, they dance good, and not George. They, <laughs> not him. I'm like, yeah. Any, any, you know, they're very musical was another one that she would say. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're very musical. I mean, you know, I, I just think that everybody was. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. or is at some point. But, but they watched, they watched, um, they didn't watch, my grandmother, I'm like, man. I, I don't remember. I mean, where do I start? It, it, it sounds like my mom. <laughs> I don't remember her watching TV. She was always busy, either cooking for my dad, doing stuff for the house. Yeah. She worked during the day. My dad was a hard worker. Uh, my dad used to watch. He watched Lawrence Welk. That was one of his. Uh, I always wanted to go to. They go, where is that every week? Where is that George? <laughs> Fuck Hollywood Palladium. Next week, same thing. Hollywood Palladium. <laughs> Boxing. Yeah, Lawrence boxing. Well, what did they watch? Uh, novelas? Yeah, and, novelas. And my mom didn't watch a novella, you know. And my dad didn't have that much time. Hardworking man, labor, yeah. you know. He'd, he'd come home, uh, drink beer, smoke a cigarette, go to bed. You know, it, it, he maybe watch hard. a game or two in between that. Maybe. No, he no. wasn't. He was an avid Dodger fan. Yeah, yeah. One television in the house. Uh, he was an avid Remember Dodger uh, fan. when on TV wasn't working during the day, and then it, you could see like Arthur, mm -hmm. yeah, and then a, a comedy special, and then <clears throat> at night it would go after dark stuff, you know. So I was I was always a light sleeper. Like I would get up, you know, just and 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 I saw the TV on under the door, and I was like, 
did I leave the TV on? Yeah. And I went over there and I looked and my grandfather's standing in front of the TV, but it's on TV and you can see like half a naked person. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, like, a, like a tit and then it would yeah. wave and then maybe yes. it was clear. And, then I, and I went like that and he had a, a fucking rod. Uh, and, like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and I just like backed up like, oh. It gets fuck. seared into you your memory. Through the, yeah. through the blue of the TV. Oh, no. That was nasty. I don't think I've ever told anybody that. Because it's just a little hallway, and I went like that. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> my, my grandparents used to watch, like, El Chavo del Ocho, uh, yeah. El Sabado Gigante, stuff like that. My grandmother would watch horror movies all the time, but she didn't have them dubbed, so she'd watch the American version of it, and she would tell me what she thought the movie was about. <laughs> you know, it's like Michael Myers would be out and chasing people, and she'd be like, that's what happens when you don't do your homework, right? <laughs> trying to scare me and stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, this is just a series about a guy trying to get kids to learn better, you know? Um, I was watching Psycho during the day on Channel 11, and, my, and I, you know, I, I was... You know when you would stand in front of the TV and just watch, you know? Yeah. And my grandmother came up behind me and said, the fuck out of me. <laughs> like, you, all the blood goes down to your feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But there's just not that many people in the house. Yeah. So when you would be concentrated, or they would tell me, uh, I'd, they'd go, hey, hey, and they would go like this. And i go, what? We're talking to you. And I couldn't, I, you'd be right there, and I didn't, yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear. Because you're so into the, what you're just watching. So what I was yeah. watching, yeah. Which is, I think, why that I have incredible recall for shit that doesn't make any sense. There's no value. <laughs> like, if, if my mind was a garage, you would go in, open the door, and you'd be like, why do I have this shit in here? I just told somebody about a pet rock and the Rubik's Cube and, and all this party town and all the things you could get, skunk perfume yeah. and gum that tastes like pepper. They would spit it. I mean, shit yeah. that you're like, why am I, why am I talking about it this? It was just in my brain. Yeah, there yeah, used yeah. to be a party town store, like a novelty store. In every, did you guys have one in your town? Uh, the the novelty stuff it's would probably be at Starbucks right now. Yeah, it, it's probably Starbucks now. Uh, but at, the ice cream trucks would always sell like the stuff that was like novelty, you know, like the gum or like oh, smoke yeah. bombs and like all that sort of stuff. Shit. Things that they shouldn't be selling, but they have it <laughs> oh, in the ice cream truck. I think the ice cream one was banging my mom to it. <laughs> 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 <No>. <laughs> Where in the fuck does that come from? You know why? Because my mom it's used like to call the guy man. Joe. Oh, Joe's coming. How the fuck do you know the fuck <laughs> Joe's name, man? It was always the ice cream man. Nobody said, oh, here comes Joe. Yeah. I didn't see if he put a little fucking popsicle by the door to let me know that he was right there. <laughs> he didn't wear a hat. I used to get those. They used to sell those plaques that had like a guy screaming and it would say, don't st stop talking when I... Oh, the guy screaming and it would say like, "Stop dinner! Oh, fuck! Stop talking when I'm interrupting or something." Oh, some, oh yeah, yeah, some like a you joke, know, cute little thing that yeah, yeah. you know. God, you show it to your friend. What the fuck is this? He thought it was a big deal. <laughs> I mean, that, no, that's all gone. Like ice cream man. Yeah, all he had yeah, then yeah. was a good humor guy. He would come out and all he sold was ice cream. Did you yeah. ever? Did you ever? Helms truck, donuts. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Did you ever see a Helms bakery truck? I've never seen oh, a Helms bakery oh. truck. Oh. I don't even think I know what that like. Did they just sell like? When I die, I want to be I want to be buried. I want one to take me to the San Bernardino Mission Cemetery. It, it was just a, it, it was just a like a little it was old a, fashioned van. Don't over there over there in Culver City by M, by Sony. Uh -huh. There was the bakery, and now it's like a art place. You can go in there. and yeah. Living space is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But they had a medallion. They were Helms Bakery. And it looked like a, a panel, like a Chevy panel thing, mm -hmm. oh, and it, the, the, the horn would be like, hot, hot, right there, right, right there. there. Oh, dude, that looks so cool. That is very yeah. throwback. And it was. the guy would open it up, and they had like pies and cakes, and then you would say, what kind of donuts do you have? And this motherfucker would pull a drawer out that was as longer yeah. than, you're like, how the it's fuck is longer truck. than the car? That's yeah. Insane. But he'd pull it out, dude, and they would be like fresh, like... Powder donuts, glaze, muffins, cakes, chocolate donuts, everything, glazed, everything yeah. on this thing, man. I I can still remember our our held man. His name was Dick, and he there was a lady. I'm Did not your mom ever have you in a dick? No. <laughs> well, and know? my mom wasn't around, but, but there was a lady that lived in the cold side. She was so sexy. That's the first time I saw a lady in a bra. I saw in the window. <laughs> she she and was. She would go sexy. out there with her bra. On? No, no, I'd see through the window. You know, light on the inside, dark on the outside. Oh, wow. I wasn't a peepee -pee <laughs> Tom, but just walking right, you, eh, and you could see it. 
Well, she would sway and she'd go up there and Dick was out. There was, it, I was a kid, but I'm saying, oh, he's doing more than selling donuts at that place. He was it, going in there? Oh, it was a, it was nice. And was his name got, Joe? You just don't want to hurt my feelings? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, his name was Dick. I don't want to mention her name because she still has family. But you know what? That, that oh, oh, there's yeah. the back of it. I mean, I listen, Matt. I mean, look at that shit, man. Nothing. Like, I would be so happy to see that if, if it oh, pulled out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I awesome. mean, I'd love if we still yeah. had We had a Helm's Bakery right there. I lived in Pico in Montebello, just a few miles away. We had a Helm's Bakery there. You know, so. You know, we place. get away from the things that, like, you know, we're much older than you, but then you have to see those things I think in your life in yeah. order to I mean some comedians don't talk about where they came from I think you do right yeah I talk about where I came from and yeah. my whole like living situation and but to have a dad that was a banger a mom that was a, a banger that's yeah and uh, and and I mean you're very you know you he you, you know <laughs> I'm you'd not never that. know about, yeah <laughs> you'd, you'd never not, know yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. that yeah I'm not that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like that whole that whole thing was like interesting because like you know they they were in that realm and stuff, and I feel like part of like what I was trying to do with the special is just kind of illustrate that just because someone comes from that sort of background doesn't mean that they're like a terrible person either. Because like a lot of the gangsters in my neighborhood are disappearing, and I don't like that because they always made me feel safe, right? Like yeah. I always felt like they created some kind of community, and people just kind of like vilify that sometimes. I know, where the fuck did they go? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And, and my parents were never like that. You yeah. know, my parents were always good, law-abiding. I was more afraid of my dad than I was of the cops. Yeah. Uh, at that time, my dad was a he was straight arrow. But those around. are those are dudes like that weren't afraid of the police, right? Yeah. Like, there was a guy named Frank over there in Pacoima, Com Negrito. He was always in a t-shirt, long shorts, and those slippers, the corduroy slippers, the white socks. Yeah. Sure. And then they would go. The police would go to his house, yeah. and they'd walk in there. And he would walk them out to their car, and they would say, "All right, we'll see you." And he's like, "All right, yeah, it's not like a grass All right, we'll see yeah. you." Like, fuck those guys, like, and you're just like, "Man, how could they do it openly?" He'd be so cool to yeah. walk cops out to the car, and they'd come and say, "Listen, do you, you know, if you know anything about this, mm -hmm. we know you're not going to tell us, but can you tell them to stop?" Yeah. Which is pretty much, they came for respect to say, you know, this is showing up on our radar kind of keep it you know let's keep it contained or whatever i don't know what the fuck yeah. they said but he wasn't afraid to see a dude that's not afraid of cops is when you're a little kid that that yeah. motherfucker becomes like a yeah. hero yeah, right like, wow this is crazy is yeah, that it's like... was uh that lapd or san fernando at the time? that was LA, that was foothill foothill you know they were crazy that's why, <laughs> why they didn't do that with a shirt you know be real set they didn't treat they didn't know right. they didn't treat did you know that like the sheriffs that. were tougher than lapd I didn't know that. Well, I, I didn't know it either. I yeah. thought the LAP, I thought the sheriffs were not like that. Barney Fife. That's what you thought. <laughs> yeah, I did. And then Be Real came from Cypress Hill, and he's like, oh, no, the sheriffs you didn't fuck with, you didn't lie to them, mm -hmm. they'd fuck you up. Yeah. And the LAPD, you could tell them anything, they'd go away. Also, I think I, I learned recently that the whole 911, like calling 911 didn't start until like the 80s or something, where you could like yeah. dial that, and yeah. that started no in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah. I had no idea. So were you on the fact, job when it started? Yeah. Before would you, they would just dial zero? Yeah, what'd you do before? They dialed either zero, and the operator would switch you over, give you an, or you just call the station. They had to have the station number. Then when I was there at East LA, they started 911, and when the 911 call came in, the call automatically gave you an address, except for cell phones. I don't know how cell phones work now. Cell phones used to go to highway patrol, but I don't know how they work today. Hmm. So, um, I know, because that's, all of a sudden, now they don't come anymore. <laughs> but if you call nine one one, they don't show up really. I mean, there's way more people to look after. People. Yeah. So if you say Prowler, they're like, motherfucker, Prowler. Yeah. You live in the LAPD's area? <laughs> and there's like shit. I, do. I think I do. Yeah. yeah. No, that's why, bro. Hey, listen. That's why. Hey, those motherfuckers told me not to call them if I ever have a situation. So I guess I'm on my own. <laughs> there's like the citizen app and stuff like that now, where like people uh, kind of report crime on their own, and yeah. you can kind of see what's going on in your community. You know, they used to call it vigilante, but then they had to change the name because they didn't want to like oh, perpetuate really? like that. And you know, let me go back. Those officers said that if I ever have a situation, not for me not to call them. I, I, I used the profanity when expressing <laughs> officers. I meant when these officers came to my house, they said, because of my stance in comedy, mm -hmm. which is comededy and not real exactly. life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When, does, when does a comedian's words 
make the Secret Service come to your house, but a fucking politician's words mean nothing. Hmm. To to fucking demonize people, Great to point. vilify. What the fuck is here? The, let me let me <laughs> hear about the, to the fucking. Go ahead, man. You know what I'm saying? Let me, say, yeah, let me say, say officially, yeah. I'm fighting the fight on your behalf because I do have friends that say, is he still anti? I said, hey, he's a comedian. That's not the way he lives. That's not the way mm. he, he's a great guy. They thought I was anti-police? Yeah. Huh. I said, no. Hey, if you want to make fools of yourself and get in trouble, you know, you, you're easy. You're an easy target if you're a cop. Well, you know, I talk about everybody. I think, you sure. know, I, I think a comedian... Shit, you talk about me. <laughs> no, I said that he can catch a night stalker, but can't control his blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> this winter, upgrade your daily routine with Bespoke Post and their new seasonal lineup of must-have Box of Awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. Now, here's one of those things that, you know, at the house, I didn't notice that my knives were missing, like, you know, uh, you know, one one's gone and the longer one's gone. But Box of Awesome uh, replaced the knives that were missing with better knives that I had. So, you know, if you get into the Box of Awesome, you look forward to getting a new Box of Awesome every month. Every month you look forward to getting a new Box of Awesome every month. Grant? And it goes beyond that. No matter what you're into, they've got something for you at Box of Awesome. Winter cocktails, cozy threads, camping gear essentials. Like you said, they've got knives of every sort. They've even got like a machete thing that yeah. I think we have here. Um, all sorts of great stuff from Box of Awesome. You know, yeah, that stuff is pretty good, man, because, you know, it's the stuff that you wouldn't think to get for yourself, but you need it. It's on the peripheral of stuff that is important to you. And then when you, like when I got the knives, I was like, oh man, this is exactly what I need. And then when I got the carry-on for the luggage, mm -hmm. and I always, you know, accumulate more stuff coming back, it was able to handle uh, some of the stuff from my suitcase that made it easier for me to travel. I actually had the Weekender bag. I was going through the airport and someone literally stopped me. They're like, I never do this. Where did you get that bag? Uh, oh. There you go. So to get started, just take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across tons of categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. Now, that's 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 what we're talking about now. And they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. And it's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. And each box is valued around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that price. It's almost like when they would have those, they say white elephant sales, where it's just like everything that people needed and yeah. didn't want that right across someone the board. else needed. Yeah. Listen, there's... This will, you know, I used to go to the Salvation Army. There was a place in, in Pacoima there, Lakeview Terrace, that was almost like Sanford and Son. Like, you walk in there, and they had everything in there, and it was packed in those aisles. You know, they go, you want that bike? You have to spend 40 minutes digging furniture out to get it from around. <laughs> you just see the end of the handlebar. But it's funny when I think about Box of Awesome, and then you think about going into one of those places and how excited I was because you never knew where you were going to get and I think that's what Box of Awesome is now without you know the ride to Lakeview Terrace it comes to your house you open the box and there you go there you go get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code OMGHI at checkout that's boxofawesome.com code OMGHI for 20% off your first box boxofawesome.com code OMGHI have you ever gotten in a fist fight? Oh, dude, I've never been in a fist fight in my life, and I'm so thankful for it. I don't know how I would do. I don't know if I'd be, like, fight or flight on it, but uh, I hope, like, there's at least I think you some... might be one of those crazy motherfuckers that'd be like... <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping, like, that gangster gene is somewhere in my body, and it'll just, like, be activated I when I need it, it to happen, you know? Almost like a superhero, like, yeah. when the shit comes down, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden, the grad, you graduate by your shirt, you look at your fist, and it's getting ten times bigger. You're like, what yeah, the yeah. fuck? Ah, ah, like it's ah. the head's breaking out, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, Fantastic Four? Yeah. yeah. But... but uh, and did your parents, uh, did they hit you growing up? No, uh, they didn't. Well, they didn't hit me because they were in jail, so they weren't able to hit me as a kid. <laughs> did you go see them in jail through the glass and all yeah, that? Yeah, I, I do all that. You know, I'd, I'd go to a place and I'd have to get on the bus, and then it'd take me like another part of it, and then wow. I'd, you know, wait like two or three hours sometimes. Were they well, in, that's a the county then. They, yeah. You go up to Wayside. Yeah. So they do up Wayside. 
Um, oh, is it where they were they in Wayside? I, I don't remember the exact prison and stuff like that, but like I, I remember the snacks oh, and the prison, vending bro. machines and stuff like that. <laughs> like, it's funny because like there's certain things that like give me good memories, like Keebler fudge stripe cookies. I love those, but I would only eat them when I would go visit my parents because they'd be in the man. vending machine. <laughs> it's a trip, man, to have your parents yeah. be in, in in prison. Huh? Well, they, they, I I don't know if he understands the difference between prison and a county jail. You know, like a Wayside. Yeah, you know that's no, but they, they were in prison, right? They, they, they'd be in prison. Uh, sometimes they'd go to jail, depending on what they did. So they'd be, um, they'd have like longer terms where they would be in prison, and then uh, jail would be like maybe two years, I think, where they'd be like away. Do people do real hard time in county jail? It, can you do more jail. than? Can you do more than? Once you're sentenced, you can only be sentenced to a maximum of a year in county jail. Oh. but you could be in county jail for two, three years pending trial. It's only after conviction, then you, you're time served. And if you're sentenced to a misdemeanor, you stay in county jail. If you're sentenced to a felony, then they transfer you to You know what one joint. of my first jokes was in high school? That my dick would get harder than a year in county jail. <laughs> 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 it would kill him on the baseball team. Do you, do you still have like old like notebooks and stuff mm -hmm. like that from when you like started out in your, your career and everything? Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. You know, when... Uh, when I mean, I would write, it's funny, man, I would write notes to myself Yeah. about things that I wanted to do. And, you know, I'm an only child. I would write them, or I would go to the to the market with my grandmother, Safeway or Thrifty Mart or, or yeah. Thrifties, and get those notepads uh, that were like this size, and you'd have like flip a them green, you flip yeah, them over, yeah. right? And I still have some of those. Yeah. Wow. Some of those. I think I mean, but like, you don't know what's gonna. You don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's no. really cool to like reflect on those too. To be like, oh, I, I can't believe like this is some of the stuff that I used to think of when writing a joke and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? And sometimes you'll be like, maybe I should try that one now and see if it works. You know? Yeah. yeah. In, in uh, where are you gonna where are you gonna shoot your your special? I'm gonna shoot it at the Bob Baker Marionette Theater. Oh yeah, where is that? Uh, in Highland Park. It, it's like on York Boulevard, uh, May 10th and May 12th. Oh shit, man! Bob Baker, Mar remember Bob Baker Marionette? I remember the marionettes. Yeah. Put, yeah. Hey, man, you guys got being able to put that shit on that screen right there. I remember in Highland. Bob Baker marionettes. There was a friend of mine that actually bought the place for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, and he was running it for a while. Is it that yeah. one in... He, he was he was into everything, though. How he, big is that place? It, it's pretty big. I mean, Eddie the, Maldonado. Yeah. Fast Eddie. Ed, fa, fast Eddie. And he got a plaque from the city for doing a... And is his son's one? still around. Man. Yeah. No, that's so... I mean, I love that place so Where much. Where is it located? Like, I, uh, on in Highland Park uh, near York uh, York Boulevard. Is it in a cul-de-sac? Uh, no, uh, it's oh, like uh, on one of like the popular. It's like on the it's one like one of the gentrified streets now. But um, I wanted to shoot it there because I'm kind of jealous of that place because I never had a place like that in my own neighborhood. So I felt like this is a place where I'd like for this to happen. Uh, they do comedy there. Uh, they do. They don't do comedy. They actually only do puppet shows and they do like private events, which is like what what you know. Um, if you're able to get one. How big yeah. is that place? 67 to 100 seats just south of the Occidental College if you yeah. know what that is. No, that's pretty cool. Man, Bob Baker, Marriott. You don't remember Bob <laughs> Baker? I don't remember him, but I remember the marionettes. Uh, th that that I do because I'm, I didn't. I was a kid that where we, we would see little monitos on strings and we'd yeah. be fully entertained. I'd love sure. it. I, I'd love it so They'd much. They walk now over with, hey, with, with the little white glove and we'd be like, shh. <laughs> yeah. well, how do they And do then you buy the ones yeah. in Tijuana when you came across a bridge. Oh, the fucking strings yeah. would get tangled yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, um, I, I was able to take a tour of that place too, and the entire second floor is just like an archive of, of, of like books and records and all these sort of things that like inspire the creation of that theater and all the puppets. Some of those puppets are actually um, from like Disneyland. Like he would make yeah. puppets for Disneyland, and you know, like those little like window displays where like they'd be moving and animated. He helped make some of those for Disney. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a lot of impressive stuff. Like, I, I geek out whenever I'm there. I just love being, like... But you see the original ones? Yeah. Yeah, you see some of the original stuff there, too. Remember Wayland Flowers and Madam? Yes. Yes, oh, I sure do. Mouse book. <laughs> 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 you know, how come, like, you know, that's how, that's how kind of... Uh, I'm not saying that we, we weren't the sharpest knives in there. That somebody like Peter Allen or, you know, I know Elton John, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that, that were flamboyant, were showmen, and they weren't... Nobody thought they were gay. They thought they were sure. showmen. Yeah. Like, even I would be like, they go, you know, uh, Paul Lynn is... Uh, Liberace. Liberace. Uh, they say, you know what, man? Just because the author likes to put on a good show, yeah, he has to love men. Uh, you know. <laughs> Little did I know that, you know, yeah. those guys would call me, go, hey, come on, call your guy that loves men. <laughs> behind the candelabra was earth-shattering to me. Mm. Oh, you know what's yeah. behind the candelabra? Mm -hmm. A big, hard, fucking fierro. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
coming out of a fucking jacuzzi full of suds. <laughs> I got it. I don't know how you. But I mean, you know, up. I don't know how you. I don't know how you do this. Uh, big shout. Your show this last weekend at Microsoft was the best, and and I've told you, I've paid good money to go see this man before I ever yeah. met him, and I laughed hard. It was the best thing I've ever mm. seen. Best stand up I've ever seen. It was, and the stuff you talk about still me, I'm trying to tell my wife. Yeah. yeah, we said this, and I'm laughing, and but it doesn't come out <laughs> like it does with you. Yeah, and half the shit she doesn't. What about I chase a dog that was barking at me? <laughs> See, the dog barks at her, we'd run away, and I said, I chase that fucker. Hey, hey. I grew up without a father, motherfucker, come back. You're just like, you just, just had it. She, 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 got, she got upset with me because I told her, a word she hates, mm -hmm. caca. She hates the word caca. Yeah. <laughs> and at one point in this show, he talks about people take pictures of their food, oh. and they send somebody, hey, here's, take a picture of a caca here, before and after. <laughs> What's that? Before and after, it's in a dick for dessert. Yeah. Well, I can pass it over, lick it, and pass it with some dipping sauce, eh? <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> But but uh, uh, um um, did you take somebody with you the first time? Where'd you first time you go on stage? The first time I went on stage was actually uh, uh, in a nervous? coffee shop in Highland Park, uh, and I was very Man, nervous. Dude, I mean, what's? It is nerve. It's nerve. Hey, you know what? You love comedy. You should try to go do it. Yeah. It's, let me tell you something, man. Let's go. Isn't it? Isn't it frightening? It is frightening because uh, you're. It's like a weird mix where like you're very excited, but also so nervous to share the ideas because you're like, do I think other people are gonna think that this idea I have is funny? And that's the the scary part, you know? Because if it's not, then you're like, you're gonna feel how long those three minutes or however long you end up doing. But also, if you do it and you you you're not getting any laughs. Yeah. Which, which is rare even that to do it and get laughs. But also yeah. if you do it, I mean, how many times can somebody go and take a beating before you say like, maybe this isn't for me? Exactly, yeah. yeah. But then you quit for good. Like I stopped and started a lot, but I, I would always stop. So, you know, to go and yeah. get a couple of laughs and then you're, it's scary as fuck to get it up is. there. And yeah. your whole day is thinking about that fucking, you look at the clock, you go, I got a lot of seven o'clock, it's two right now, then it's four, and then it's like 5.15, so and then you're just like, oh. and Then you go over there and they call your name and you got to, yeah, <laughs> fucking step up on the thing, and, ah. and they don't know you either. So oh. you're, yeah, so it's like also like they're introducing this person, and you want to like kind of give a good impression, you know. I feel like there's been so many moments where like I go to a new place, and then they say my name, and I'm like, nobody here knows me. What if I just walked away, and they're like, oh, I guess they're not here, you know? Right, right, right. Because <laughs> it is scary. I will admit that oh, it's yeah. like a scary. Did you ever thing do that? Do. Did you ever walk away? No, no. I was like, I'm here. I'm here because I, I want to try this, yeah. and I need to get this just so I can have that closure of like this is what would have happened, and this is what did happen, you know. Fuck! Yeah. I've been asked that hey, you could do this, but you got to do it almost already in, in yeah. those in your speeches. Yeah, you, you know, I I use humor as a vehicle to get my point across. It's helpful. And I do a lot of lectures, so I, I I do that, and I've been around it, and I've been asked not to go ahead and why don't you do this, Gil? Why don't you? Do and I couldn't do it as regular living as as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a continue. One night he said, Gil, my comedian's late. He's not here. Oh. He says, go on up there. You could do, give me 10 minutes. You could do this. I know you can. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, no, you guys do it for a living. No, thank you. I wouldn't mind trying to, it, it was fun being up with Momo, you know, oh, yeah. up there and, and doing some stuff with him. I could stand up there. You could say like this. I like being around Momo because he makes me feel thin. <laughs> like that's a good one to start with. <laughs> In the old Johnny Ode show, I was with him and Hefty. I've ever fuck. It's like the three tons of joy. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Hefty man. Those dudes. You know, I told Momo, you don't really don't have to book every comedian that's. That's almost like those Russian nesting dolls. That <laughs> <laughs> mm, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you can go up there and say. It looks like those Russian nesting dolls. Like I go and Momo goes inside of me, and then I go inside yeah, Hefty. Yeah. Yeah, That'd yeah, be a so good one. I I could do it for a few minutes, but not if I knew I had a show coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was something like, hey, you were up there with it and and do it, maybe. But I I don't know that I could do what it. What about when there's nothing up there, like Saturday? There's 7,100 people up there. There's nothing up there but a stool, no water. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that big-ass stage where fucking bands play. I'm up there by myself. It wouldn't bother me. The The number of people doesn't bother me at all because I've spoken in front of, you know, 7,000 people before. 
that that the numbers don't bother me. It's just you got to make them entertain. You know, yeah. you're proud. You got to make them laugh. If that's what you're doing, you better say something that's going to make them laugh. And if they're not laughing, I'd be able to walk off the fucking stage. Ooh, man. I, I've heard like people say like you know the audience gives you their time, you give them a memory. You know, sure. so like, kind of being cognizant yeah. of all the things that they're also putting on the line. To see you've, you. you've heard me laugh before. Yeah. <clears throat> there was a comedian up there that was doing a show, and and the MC was no good. He was no good. Started off, and it was a fundraising, and, but they had kids there, and kids. It was like a Mexican wedding. Kids running around, sliding on the floor, <laughs> and this guy went up there and said, "Okay, now we have a comedian for you, and here he is." And he went up there, and he was a friend of mine, and he went up there and he started doing his stuff, and he was fucking dying. Ooh. Nobody was laughing more. Was it Gilbert Escobar? Me. No, Rudy Moreno. <laughs> it was Rudy. He was dying. But dying for real or dying because he's a casi cavalo. No, he was, no, he was, the <laughs> crowd was dead. They were laughing. They were paying attention. And I'm laughing my ass off. And he knew <laughs> I was laughing, not because his shit was that funny, but he because was he was down. dying. <laughs> he was going down. <laughs> he would tell Joe, he'd say something funny and nobody would laugh. And I'd go, ah! <laughs> and, and when he got off, he said, cabron, I knew what the fuck you were doing. You were laughing because I was dying. Once and, in a while, you got to take an ass kicking, though. Yeah, yeah. And, and he and it wasn't his fault. If the MC would have given him a better inner, would have gotten the I crowd. Think it has a lot, I think that has a lot to do with the two, right? Sure. That's it. You're setting the vibe you for, like, You better the set show. the crowd up. And, and this guy was a TV personality, but he wasn't a good MC like that. And so, too bad. Do you still get nervous at all when you go up and do shows? Or has that, like... Mm, no, not really. No? yeah. yeah. You know, you you know, I was never a uh, <clears throat> a comedian that would do it by the numbers, you know. Yeah, and I've I've tried, but I've gotten it pretty pretty close to because I used to do those specials live. Yeah, and you have to be a little bit by note, you know. Yeah. But Saturday wasn't uh, that. I, I thought about it during the day, and I thought, ah, you know, then you got to go against your instinct. But you know, all that. It's almost like what did they say when I. When I, they gave me the jazz festival, that all the musicians there were like, oh, yeah, we know why they picked you. Because when you do it, you just, like, find things, you know, yeah. and like jazz. Like, you know the notes, you play the notes. An hour, all right, I'll play the notes for an hour. And you know that. Yeah, but trying cool. to get somebody who's a reader of music to be a jazz player, jazz is all about improvisation and, and yes. just being in the moment. Yeah. And and the other stuff is like, you know, da, da, you know, like I was watching uh, Whiplash. I like Whiplash, that movie. Oh, it's great. Because, you know, they're trying to go by the notes and stuff, but that guy, you know. And then, so to me, there's two different two different kinds. I don't think they make... I found kind. out the hard way as a musician. I could read, but... Yeah, you're a musician. I, I couldn't uh, improvise like do you that. Go, do you go... Is it a script, or do you go... How do you go... Um, I, I try to like pick like the, the beats and stuff, like finding like a, a rhythm where um, I feel like everything is connected by like one through line and that makes it kind of easier for me to be like, well, instead of like, what's the next joke? It's like, when I end here, this is the next thing I'm gonna talk about and how it relates to the last thing I just talked about. Cause I, I, I feel like I'm nervous yeah. of like having to like jump from one topic to the other in a way that doesn't feel organic. So I like in having it in that sort of way, it's been really helpful. and. Doing my stand up, you know. Have your parents seen you do stand up? Yeah, they have. Um, <laughs> they have. Uh, at first, like, Dude, what did you hear from the back? Trip out! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit it, me, who that fool, that fool, that fool up yeah. there? <laughs> That's funny, Dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just stuff like that. Um, they saw me do stand up when I was like 19, and um, it was a show where that Al Madrigal hosted. So it was him, uh, Melissa Villasenor, Jesus Trejo, Chris Garcia, and myself. And that was the first time they saw me do stand up. And they liked it and they were supportive and that meant a lot to me, you know? Cause like a few years I told my mom before before I did that, that I wanted to stand up. She's like, Wow, you're not funny. And I was like, All right, cool. Well, I'll, <laughs> I think I'll that's what you. they say anyways. Yeah. yeah that's, but yeah. that's also like kind of like a, in a weird way, I feel like it's kind of loving or it's like show me or like mm -hmm. prove me wrong, you know? And I felt like in that instance, like I felt like I proved to them like this is something I can do, you know? When I when I um got the show, you know, the first show. <clears throat> And they said, well, what kind of father are you going to be? And I said, well, I'm going to be a father that is not going to go easy on the kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be wrong, and I'm going to be wrong loud. You know, like uh, I said one time, don't you have pictures of our, where, where do you have the baby pictures of our kids? I said, I don't have those in here. Those kids look like Martians. <laughs> you know, like, so I would say, uh, 
one time the kid had the whole computer out of there. And I said, I walked around the corner, just all ad lib. Oh, I let Bill Gates. Ching out, man. He goes, Don't you have the protection plan? If you have the protection plan, you both of you wouldn't be here. You know, like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah. what, what, the, the scripts we write is like, Where is that? <laughs> but, I, but I learned that in, in that body of that show, that the way that I was going to make it work was not to be a comedian that I saw who had a show. And I went to go see him. At, I was at the improv and he was on, and I was, I think I was. I didn't go, never went down there to look, mm -hmm. but he was very safe. And he wasn't safe before he got the show. And I saw him outside. I said, What are you working on? He goes, Oh, some stuff, you know, because my show is, you know, a family show. And I don't want people to see my TV show and then come and see me. And then I'm That's like, different. And I said, And I, when he, I remember him driving away. I was like, Fuck, man. And I don't think, did I have my show yet? Maybe not. But I thought, mm -hmm. if I get a show, I'm not going to go easy so that people think they're coming to see the guy from TV. That's the kiss of death. Like, you know, yeah. the stand-up would be the main engine and everything's come off of the main engine, you yeah. know? So um, I didn't do that. And then a lot of, t early on, kids would come and see me. And I remember I was in fucking Lake Tahoe <laughs> and I walked out there and there was a little two fucking kids sitting next to each other with hat, fucking Burger King fucking crown. <laughs> <laughs> And it was sold out. I'm like, what the fuck are these kids? So you're trying to adjust, and it's tough to adjust. Yeah. And then we decided started to put down that you had to be over 18, 18. or 21 because mm -hmm. it's just easier for me. Yeah. But sure. then you know these girls. I remember these little girls in in at the Dodge Theater in Arizona. They were like eight years old. They sent me these notes, and they're like, I love you so much, George Lopez. I watch your show. When I grew up, I want to marry you. And stuff. I was like, I was like, okay. Go over there and bring these girls over here and bring their parents over here. Yeah. And they went backstage and I told their parents, this is not a show that they would enjoy, that you would enjoy them seeing. Yeah. So I took pictures with the little girls and then I took pictures with the family. I gave them their money back and I told them to trust me that, you know, this was probably, don't tell them, just probably the easier for all of us. Good and for then That's great. I saw those notes and I told my dude, throw these fucking notes away because if some <laughs> police officer sees <laughs> that I'm dating a nine year old and she can't wait to marry me, and they're like, and I'm like, let me see, burn them up, man. Like, I don't want to see that shit. Good for you. Yeah. That's savvy on two levels, right? And that was tough. That was tough to do. I think it's really cool, though, to have like that, that self awareness of like, you know, I don't want someone to come in and think that it's going to be a certain thing, you know? Um, and it's also like amazing to see like what you mean to so many people in that regard too. Like I mean, it must feel nice to know, see man. those notes. Did right? you see that fool in the street uh, protesting me at the Microsoft? No. There's one dude. Someone protested no. you. Listen, man, I pissed off thousands of people. Yeah. But when you can piss one dude off, <laughs> you're so specific that you. You're surprised somebody didn't kick his ass out. He was run. out there with a megaphone. And this guy. <laughs> I thought those all went away. But you know, you still, you know, you don't take it personal. Well, yeah. there was a difference. And one reason I never went to see him, your friend, Bob Saget. Yeah. He did, he had this persona from television. Yeah. And I understand his stand up was, was different. 180 degrees, man, from what he did on TV. If I'd have known that, shit, I'd have been at every show. I know, man. It's <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's interesting that with those, with those, I don't know, so much, man, like. Like Cat Williams, I saw on Damon Wayne's show, and I thought he was hilarious. And when you go see him, he's hilarious. But then you know you go off the deep end, and and however you know, yeah. I, I I never wanted. I mean, I've gone off the deep end, but not 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 like that. No, I mean, not not to yeah, yeah. to ruin a tour or tours of people. No, or anything, no, it, 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 but just anything. It just it was good. You know, uh, the, there was a there was a good blend yeah. of everything. In your show, not yeah. just the dark side, you know. So it was, it was good. It was when I got good. divorced. They said I was, I was pretty dark. No, oh, it was. I had a, some fans send me letters saying, "Hey, really? man, I don't know what you're going through, but yeah. you know." I'm I, telling you, it's the best show, bar none. Saturday night was the best thing. You know I've the big. Seen. You know the biggest thing is that mine and my and my ex wife went to the show, and then yes. mine said to me in a message, "I'm here with with mommy. You know, let me know, and I'll come in there by myself." But I let them both in there. Oh, really? We took pictures of us together, and uh, I met her for the first time. I would say that I don't know why. I don't know why I was mad at her for getting divorced. Fuck, I'm the one that caused it. <laughs> but I don't know why I was mad. I think it's just part of. Of I think your dad. Ask your dad. Why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, he was probably tripping out. But but I mean, you know that 
I don't know. It was just that what we're built into. I knew I knew it was me, but I was still mad. And and as loud as I laughed, there was some guy behind me that was laughing his ass off just as much as I was. Well, at least there's two of us nuts in here. Watching yeah, the yeah, show. yeah. No, was, and, it tur- it was, and it turned out it was Big Boy. He was Big Boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he loves he that shit. Oh, that's awesome. God damn. That's awesome. He, and I didn't find out until we were talking later. And he says, That was you right in front of me then. Because he heard me say that I was sitting by Maya. And it's pretty good, man, because, you know, that's 7,100 people going at the same time. All, yeah. All going at the same time, man. Oh. Have you uh, have you acted at all? Have you ever an opportunity to act? Um, I I've been like on auditions and stuff like that, but I haven't like had the opportunity to go like to a bunch of like different. Or have, you ta- really... have you taken acting class? I actually I feel like I, I really need to, but I would like to like pursue that to to some degree. Like I, I like writing, like sketch writing and like stand up comedy, but I do know that like I should maybe try to uh, explore the other world of that. You know, you know, I want to tell you that I think it's critically important. Yeah, because um, just even even in this latest. Uh, show that we're doing that I've, there's been some comedians that have I've read for parts yeah. and they're not very good mm. As, and it's and it's not just me like like when it's done they're like okay anyways and then you see hear the other one but yeah. that's what they expect from us is not to be able to act mm. and when I did the first show in December of 2001 it, um, at the right before the right before the Christmas break I, I read with Valente and Valente was an actor I could blood and blood and all kinds of stuff and I was awful. And I could see it in my partner's eyes. Like, they were like, oh, shit, this motherfucker. Oh, really? Can't act. And then I went back and I said, find me, I told my manager, find me an acting coach. And I had that woman for like six years. Oh, wow. That's but awesome. If, but if I, ha- if I had not, if I had not had the awareness to say, man, I can nobody ever asked me if I could act. If I hadn't done anything and just thought, oh, fuck, I'll be all right. That all of this would not, not have happened. Because yeah. you, we have to be able to. Um, act to understand the situation to break down cold reading and stuff like exactly. that and more of us would have an opportunity to be something other than just somebody that does stand up yeah not to be like pigeonholed into like one thing right. either right uh, I feel like right now I'm recognizing that I do want to learn how to act a little bit more yeah. so I can get uh, better at those other things you know um yeah, I mean, even like in, in writing stand-up, like there's things that I feel like I want to learn to write about more, you know, in a way that's like uh, making my stuff different than what it was before. Do you do you do characters in your in your ad or is it just lines? Uh, just just like uh, just uh, yeah, just lines. Um, I don't do any characters, not yet, I guess. But um, we'll see. <laughs> I didn't do any characters before. Yeah. But I watched Richard yeah. Pryor live in Long Beach mm-hmm. for man, maybe like a thousand. A thousand times, and my grandmother fucking hated it. <laughs> and she would walk in and she'd go, Todavía estás con ese negro? And I would be like, Hey, grandma, I'm studying. I'm like, ah, negro? I mean, and, and I mean, it just taught me so much, man. Like, yeah. and there were no, there was no YouTube, there were no cell phones, there was no fucking yeah. uh, just, anywhere you could go other than just to see a VHS yeah. and then learn from that. Yeah, or maybe like see someone live too, or like see somebody stumbling live. upon it. Yeah, yeah. How do you like ever decide like what you want to like write about with like your stand-up specials and stuff like that? Is there like ever like? But I think it's like you know since I've been doing it for so long, it's almost if you had a program like you know, Quicken. Yeah. That the, that <laughs> that it just comes to you when you've yeah. been thinking about it for your whole life, like they just they just pop in your head. Gotcha. Yeah. You know. The amount of physicality that you throw in there, to go with to complement the joke, is. It? Is important. I don't know if you learned that in acting school or that's just you. No, I think uh, I. But but there's to to throw to carry the joke across. Mm-hmm. There's a certain amount of physicality yeah. that uh, goes in there with it. I used to be a lot more physical, but <laughs> I'm not as spry as I used to be. I, I try to. I try yeah. to. But you know, uh, uh, there's a there's a there's a rhythm to the way I. You, it's just almost back and forth. You see it? Mm-hmm. Like yes, one, two, I did. Three. one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. And they're standing around the middle of it, but it's like a one, two, one, sure. two, three, one, two, three. I might go over here and come back. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three rhythm. And you know, Chris Rock told me that. You had that pacing. And Eddie Murphy told Arsenio, tell him I like that, that one, two, that, that kind of like painting, you know? You're just painting. One, two, three. Let's feel nice. One, yeah. two, three, like that. You're not, you know, bam, and then really? waiting, like you, and you fill in the gaps and all that. Like, I think, you know, Billy Crystal said years, years ago that it's like boxing, and it is, because you're in there, you don't know them, you throw one out there, you get it, you try, you're trying to hook another one connected to it. Yeah. And then, almost like flying a plane, like 
once the plane gets in the air, what does the pilot say? Return the fasten seatbelt, sign off. Yeah. And now you're just you're just flying. You're cruising. I think you yeah, yeah right? Exactly. Does it work over here? Try this side. You go over there, and yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it really does. It. Um, and uh, uh, how long is the second to be? Is it going to be? It'll be an hour. Yeah, an hour of stand up. And uh, it's, in particular, it's uh, all. And a little like, bit of a documentary, too, huh? A little bit of a documentary, too. So, like, uh, one of the elements I want to kind of explore is, you know, people are always like asking, uh, where, how do you think of your jokes and stuff like that? So, I kind of want to take people to the, the spots where the idea for the joke has come from, you know, like, and also kind of exploring the history of my neighborhood where it's not specifically like, here's the history of Glass Hole Park, but it's more of like, here's my history in relation to Glass Hole Park. And talking about my neighborhood, the people that live in it, and everything in that one hour. And what about the guys that you grew up with and girls? Did, did you? Uh... Um, we like still like a lot of people still live in the same neighborhood, but some people have like uh, moved away and everything since. Some people will hit me up and be like, "Oh, I have been meaning to go to a show and stuff like that." And so, um, yeah, it, it is kind of cool to see like what people become as they get older too. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And you still have your nucleus of friends that? Yeah, I still have my best friends uh, from when I went to like uh, when I went to like elementary school and everything. My best friends, Luis and Daniel, like we went to the same school. We still pursue stand up together. Oh, it's nice. real cool. I'm, I'm happy that I, I have the ability to say that, you know. And they're uh, poquito nerdy like you. Yeah, they're they're a little bit nerdy. <laughs> I think that's a good title. We, we all read comic nerdy. books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> poquito nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you read comic books. We read com yeah. I loved collecting comic books when I was a kid. Like uh, Spider Man was like my hero. Like that was my favorite comic book to like read and collect. Uh, is Spider Man DC or Marvel? He's Marvel. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which yeah. one is better? Well, let me ask you. Which one is better, DC or Marvel? I like Marvel a lot more. Um, I mean, the movies have been pretty like everyone's a hit. You know. Yeah. I've, I've never been disappointed by a Marvel movie like in the past like few what years. What about DC? Like the Wonder Woman movie wasn't good. Shit, I didn't watch any. But I didn't watch. Well, Batman. I haven't seen <laughs> the movies. Yeah, I did, yeah. and I wasn't into. They're the, like the Bloods and books. Crips, man. Like they're, <laughs> yeah. they're, I, yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't in. I wasn't into the comic books, and I haven't gone seen any any of the movies now. Now Batman, there's, there's no Robin anymore, huh? Not in, and I think not in these. Yeah. I, I don't know what they're doing with him. Scott, in the Rob, Robin's doing yeah. 15 to life. That'd be cool if he got out and the game was closed. You open it up and there's a little folded thing with the R on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use rubber. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So Marvel has all the uh, mm -hmm. Iron Man and uh, love the Avengers and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Did you like any of that stuff growing up? I or? did. I liked the. Uh, I like Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, remember the cartoons with the. See, remember the I'm, I'm, JJ I, Jameson? The you have to remember, yeah, I'm older. Yeah. I'm older than obviously you. I'm older than George. Mm -hmm. So during those time when all that was going on, number one, on the streets in the body, you, you didn't yeah. you know, talk about that stuff. Then I went into the army. Then I come back. Then I became a cop. I didn't have time for all the, any of that shit. So I didn't. You know, I, I lost. Uh, your your favorite Eddie Van Halen. I wouldn't know an Eddie Van Halen song today, which mm. is dis not being disrespectful no, to no. him, but I was listening to other stuff. Yeah. And now in my car, you turn it on, it's all comedy stuff. It's all I ever listened yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know a lot of these. Now, you talk to my grandson, 22 years old, he's all over Marvel, you know, yeah. Spider-Man, all this shit. And my grandkids, oh, you know, he, he <laughs> yeah. knows all that stuff. How it's do you really feel? Yeah, 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 exactly. And he, he puts it on, on the TV. And I'll just leave. You know, I just walked to another room. But ride. did you ever go to concerts when you were in high school or anything like no, that? No. No. I went to concerts. Wow. You know, one of the one of the best battle of bands, Buddy Rich versus uh, uh, Harry James versus Woody Herman. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm saying, and you went to that? Yeah. Yeah. Where was that at? That was at the Carousel Theater in uh, Covina. It was a new theater. It was a theater in the round up on the hill right off the tennis. I don't even think it's there anymore. Oh, wow, man. That's, yeah. I went wow. to go see uh, Buddy Rich before. That's live amazing. That's so Because cool. I, I, was a, I was a musician. Buddy you know, Rich I, I love music. Oh, and so and cool. Buddy Rich, I remember people were talking when he first started playing, and he just said, hey, wait a minute. Stop, stop the fucking music. He says, hey, you guys pay to come and see me fucking play. You either shut the fuck up. And listen to me play or get the fuck out or I'll get the fuck out. Is that what he said? Use yes. language like that? Yeah. That. That's what I say. <laughs> and, and he yeah. would just, and everybody started cheering for him. He started again and it was a it was a great concert. So you saw Buddy Rich's badass. He's in Whiplash. He's badass. Is, is listening to him. One of the greatest oh, yeah. drummers of all time. So cool. I think Buddy Rich gave Freddie Prinze a, uh, a drum set. I think they were on The Tonight Show. Freddie really Prinze cool. played a little drums oh, uh, really? and they gave him a, a drum set. So those were my guys, like Freddie Prinze. Yeah. And I forget who he played Brian. for, either Harry or Woody, the next day in the paper it said, 
uh, one of them won. I forget which one won, but only because he had Buddy Rich playing for him. Yeah. Uh, Buddy uh, Rich, man. It's like a cheat code. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, it was awesome. Uh, I remember seeing Johnny Mathis when he was really fucking young. Yeah. You know, these guys. So that's that's what I was really Pretty amazing. Into. And I didn't see. Then I became a man of the 60s. And so all my money, I remember going seeing The Temptations three nights in a row. Well, that's amazing. You know, so I'd go see. Where were they? Uh, well, I always ask. No, I, I don't remember. You've been a, you were a music fan? I, when I was a, when I was a, in high school, I went to actually a few uh, rock concerts. I, I'd seen Van Halen at the Staples Center. I think like around 2014. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I went my first concert, which was, is a long time for you, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you realize it's like for for how old were you then? Uh, I was like 16, 17. Fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. 14, <laughs> 2014. He's like 16 years old. And yeah, I, I saw I saw them and they were great. The first concert I went to was uh, Roger Waters' "The Wall," you know, from oh, from Pink Floyd and everything. Nice. I was just so impressed by like the stage design and sure. seeing like the projections on on like this whole stage that they built, and I I loved it. Like it felt like a whole like experience being there, you know. So you're a Pink Floyd fan of the music? Did you go with your friends or? I went with my dad to go see Pink Floyd for the first oh. time. Yeah, and he was like trip out at all the things <laughs> that, that, that we were seeing on the wall. He's it's like the Damn. perfect band Did he to smoke trip weed out or anything? To. Did he smoke weed or no? Probably, yeah, probably had to stay up yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. cuz you have a check in the next day yeah no um but yeah he he didn't do any of that uh, sort of stuff i I've, I've actually never gotten high in my life before you have yeah. you drank no. no never drank never never smoked this yeah. dude has never drank or gotten high <laughs> <I'm> straight as <edge. laughs> and he still <laughs> finds shit that's funny I, listen that's if that's i was sober i would have found shit that's funny at all <laughs> that that's as good as it gets for him yeah <laughs> i think I, if i would if, if i didn't drink or smoke i would have thought my grandmother was just mean not funny <laughs> <laughs> like, hey how's your grandmother fuck her i don't think she's not entertaining at all yeah <laughs> i had to, i had a friend with me uh, a young kid and his dad and I are, we're cops together, and his, he's young. Uh, and he saw, the first thing he saw was the Eddie Van Halen guitar. Mm -hmm. And I thought this guy was going to piss in his pants. He thought it was the greatest thing. All going. in the room? Yes. He thought it was the greatest thing going. He said, God damn, you know, and he got all excited. Yeah. And I said, yeah, because I know the history, because of you, I know the history behind it. I said, That's cool. Don't you dare get within ten feet of that motherfucker! <laughs> no, man, dead. this thing's <sighs> it's a legendary guitar. It's probably the most, most iconic single man. guitar there is. See, with me, Beautiful. I'd sit there and say, "God damn, this is a guitar." I don't know. <laughs> you know, I always have a guitar with me. Sure. And uh, you really? Yeah, always. I'd bring one in here, uh, but I used to. But um, I don't have any musical ability. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love play. I play every day, but I just I, maybe it's because I. I think I'm dyslexic or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't want to learn a song all the way through. I just learn the beginning and then move over to another one. Like, I could never be in a band because I, I would, I just, I, I don't know, man. I would stay focused for that. Exactly. I think, you know. And you, you're going to at least be like, the, check this out. You play the first few notes. And, and they're, they're like, like oh, this guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. uh, I just love, I, you know, music was big for me, like rock music. In that time, I mean, I was in the 70s, so. You were away, yes. but you know, first band I saw was Kiss and Kiss oh, and nice. Cheap Trick, and then we saw, man, I fucking saw everybody, man. I made friends with Ted Nugent. That's awesome. And yeah. friends with Van Halen, all the dudes at Van Halen and Sammy Hagar and the dudes that I call like Santana and I are like brothers, man. It's like that's that's crazy. See, I, I liked like Black Sabbath and like yeah. uh, like oh, Led yeah. Zeppelin and stuff like that. Like that was like the the wheel Pink Floyd, you know, all, that was like the wheelhouse of the stuff that I liked and gravitated towards. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne was one of the concerts that I also saw with my oh, parents nice. when I was like 16. Oh, yeah, that's sick. it was really fun. Yeah, those guys were. Well, Four I mean. Tops, Temptations, Midnighters, <laughs> Tierra. <you know>? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dudes from Tierra. Uh, uh, Stevie Salas just died. There yeah, a couple and, his, of and his other his brother. other brother Rudy died uh, earlier in the year. You think when the year. light hit him and he saw his brother at the in the light, you think they talked finally after 30 uh, years? Yeah, or yeah, I think they did, and they started talking before he, just before he died. Before Rudy died, you know they were they were. You know back up. that that's one thing that I I mean I don't know I guess it is in every culture but mm -hmm. in our culture we uh, abandon people forever. You know we we don't sure. talk to anybody and then you think you're gonna live forever and you know my grandmother had a half sister she didn't speak to I haven't talked to my mother in a, a long long time yeah. or you know half sisters that nobody knows I have but you know in in the act of being forgiving yeah. is ultimately the the you know the purest act of of love could is to forgive somebody but yeah 
you know. It's so hard, though. That was a tough one. <laughs> yeah. tough one. It went for a long time. How about and, there? And it's just so there? sad. I remember playing with them in games when they were the Salas brothers. Little, They were yeah. younger than I was, and, and they'd play. And, of course, I was friends with both of them through the years. It's not my family, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, Who have you seen? What comedians have you seen or what actors have you seen that, that – or anybody – that that you know you got nervous to see. Um, I, I actually used to work as a writer's assistant for Will Smith for a little bit, and like be, yeah. he would like walk around and yeah. the workplace and everything. And that was someone that I was always like so impressed to see because he's such a kind individual mm-hmm. and like he'd always say what's up. And so like, I I really love that about him. I also saw Jamie Fox once, and like I was like like oh man, this is crazy. Like that was a person where I felt like very starstruck to yeah, see yeah. in person. Um, you know, it's just, I also like learning when people are like really kind also, you right. know? Yeah, yeah. No, it makes course. me feel good. I'm like, oh yeah, you can do. That makes me feel even better. Yeah, yeah, you can do all these amazing things and not like have an ego about it, you know? And that felt like very, very cool, you know? Jamie Foxx, I'd pay big bucks just to go see because not yeah. only is he talented as a comedian, yeah, he's an awesome singer. Yeah, yeah, he's, he can do it all. He could do it all. And I mean, I just love watching him. He, yeah. He, he's, he, he's great. Right, it's very like impressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're putting him up there on the pedestal with the uh, no, I mean, with George Lopez. No, 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 no I mean, <laughs> he, but, he, but I, you know, you see all those guys like yeah, you know, he's nope. um, <laughs> Arsenio. Like I've known Arsenio for you know met Eddie Murphy through Arsenio and that stuff and those guys. You know, Arsenio, I went to the Arsenio Hall show one time with a yeah. group of, group of friends. He said something that was so, so funny, and he said that I guess it was coming up on Mother's Day or Valentine's Day, and he and he. And he, he's talking about, hey, come on, guys, g- give it up. Take take your hair off the bar of soap after you're done with the shower. <laughs> take your little hairs off. <laughs> he's, and, and let the wife use a remote once in a while. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, funny, uh, funny man. When did you, what year was that? In the 80s? Shit, it had to be in the 80s. Is it, there's still fucking remote. There are remotes, huh? There's still remotes, yeah. yeah. Well, what, what do you, what do you, let's, let's, let's look at, uh, what do you what are you watching right now on TV? Oh, dude, I love to I love to watch cartoons. Uh, that's like one of my favorite things to watch. Yeah, wh- why'd you <laughs> get it together? Kale. I knew you would laugh that get hard. It at it together. I like to watch cartoons. <laughs> I can watch your cartoons, eh? I love it. What do you like? What do you like? I, I mean, I, I I love to watch like uh, like uh, my when I was a kid, like Hey Arnold and stuff like that was one of my favorite things to, to check hey Arnold out. Was good. SpongeBob. I still love to watch SpongeBob. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I like to watch. It's so funny. There's so many memes out there from oh, yeah. like that same show. It, it's mm-hmm. and I think it's evergreen. Really. The, the, what about that little bear thing? underwater with the with the with the Astronaut suit, pretty, the, pretty funny. Oh. What's her name? What's her name? It's um, um Sandy the squirrel. Sandy, yeah, yeah, it's a squirrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I grew up on SpongeBob. But they, too. but they write that shit, man, so that it's, it's like meaning, like. It's entertaining. Yeah. The, uh, the Barnacle Bill and the what's the other? The yeah, two? Barnacle Boy and Mermaid Man oh. and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, super, yeah. the Batman hey. and Robin parody, like hey. the uh, show. Yeah. And who was the old man? Ernest Borg. It was. From it, it's like Mr. Krabs, and there's also oh, hey. Squidward yeah. and everything. Both of those yeah. two, like the Barnacle, Bar- Barnacle Boy. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other, they're, they're like Batman and Robin. It's some funny shit, dude. I miss it. Really it. Is. I, 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 I've never that. seen SpongeBob. Spongebob. Never. Well, I, SpongeBob yeah, yeah, yeah. only because. Until you just said this, yeah. that's what my grandkids used to watch. But it's yeah. Ernest Borgnine, Spongebob. who's a fucking I, I think he won an Academy Award. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else yeah. was? Who was Mikhail's yeah. Navy. Mikhail's Navy Mikhail's was Navy. Ernie, Ernie Borgnine. The, and uh, and was it Clancy Thomas? Is that his name? Uh, was Mr. Krabs? Uh, yeah, yeah. Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown. Fucking amazing, Clancy man. Crabs, yeah. Those, like, yeah. Tom yeah. Kenny was a comedian. I remember seeing Tom yeah. Kenny do stand-up. Oh, really? And then Tom Kenny starts doing fucking voiceovers. It's like the, he, that motherfucker could buy an island and nobody yeah. would know him. <laughs> he has a band also right now that, that he does like shows with and, and stuff oh, like really? that. Um, I had heard that he like had an audition for SNL, didn't get that, but he got SpongeBob. And I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. I would have I mean, never heard him do SpongeBob if he had gotten SNL. Oh, that's exactly. so crazy to, to think about even, that. Who would even thought? I mean, the you know the voice of SpongeBob, which I can't remember what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. a, that show was supposed to be educational, like that was, that was the intention. Then it turned into like this whole different thing. It's like it, an empire. <laughs> yeah, it's like an empire. Yeah, not even my grandkids who grew up watching that shit. That's Watch just SpongeBob anymore. Get that pinche mugre. Yeah, they would tell you to change that shit. What are the other ones that that? Uh, okay, so that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, listen. Yeah, I love watching cartoons when I was growing up. A lot of them were very racist. I think that's went into my fabric of who I am. Yeah. <laughs> but but also, when you get older, man, like there was. I saw a little video last night that that this old man mm-hmm. had lost his wife. 
right? And his kids got him a, they rescued a dog uh, to give him a dog. And they had a, a, like a camera in the room. Yeah. And that dog, when it's time to go to bed, that dog's running around the room and the man's trying to catch a dog. But eventually, they're both playing with each other and he's jumping around. He's in his 90s. And you think, and that said, you know, this it changed this guy's life. Yeah. yeah. Like losing his, his partner, but then having, you know that, the dog mm-hmm. just shows up. But that guy is just like he's he's brighter than sure than all of us when yeah. they go to bed. Like that's a great. And then he's dancing around, and the dogs chasing him, and they're doing this. I mean, it's beautiful. It's such a good feeling too, you know. That we should never abandon the things that got us to where we are. I don't yeah. think. Yeah. I don't think yeah. like that. Like no. cartoons. Like never, never, never. You, my cartoons when I was growing up was the Road Runner. Yeah. You know. Uh, with the Yabba Dabba Doo, the Flintstones. Oh, like Hanna-Barbera and like Hanna, Looney Tunes. Hanna-Barbera, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yogi Bear. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Bug. You know, uh, who's a little Mr. Like, Magoo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 these. Jabberjaw and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. No, what's those that one? one? Jabber, who? Jabberjaw yeah, was like. Uh, not familiar. I think what that was one? Uh, Josie uh, and the Pussycats uh, or something like uh, that. Oh, yeah, Josie and the Gatos de Panocha. <laughs> 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 That's what I would call in school. <laughs> Josie and I got those up on the And on Saturday mornings, you had Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, mm. uh, Sky King. Okay, Sheriff John. Lone Ranger. Sheriff John was on Monday through Friday. So was Engineer Bill, Monday through Friday. I mean, they did, <laughs> they did things where, like, they don't do those anymore, do they? Where, where the guys pretending to be, how can Mr. Captain Kangaroo? Yeah, Captain oh. Kangaroo, Mr. Green Jeans. Yeah. Wow, man! You know the 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 uh, documentary of uh, Mr. Rogers, because mm-hmm. huh. Mr. Rogers was on forever. Mm-hmm. But the documentary of that dude is pretty pretty emotional, man. Like, have you, have you seen it? No, I wanted. You know, to watch you cry it. it. You cry at everything, Carlos. You cry when it just the minute he starts to put his sweater on. Oh, I yeah. mean, this guy yeah. was like about all of the things in life that are good about people. <laughs> and people of different color, not me, but him, <laughs> but people of different color. And in the end, man, you just like, you're just like, wow, man, that guy, so many times our heroes have let us, I don't think they can let us down, you know, Bill Cosby and things like that, you know, that, that, you know, you don't know what's really going on, but that yeah. guy was really about what he was about. And that's, that's fucking different, man. It's Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy did a, a great parody on on him on Saturday Night Live. He did. Oh, oh yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great yeah. parody on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that stuff is uh, is good, man. The um, A lot of actors like came out of like uh, public access television shows, too. Like there was um, The Electric Company, and that had Morgan Freeman on that for, I remember, for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you remember The Electric Company? No. We did that. Didn't we show it in here? No, we did no. the thing. Uh, it's like Sesame Street, um, just saw, I think on a different network. The Electric Company was... Morgan Freeman, and they would do a thing where, I think I said this somewhere before, the love of chair where the dude was sitting in a chair, and they would talk about him on a voiceover, and he would move his hand, and that was it for the next, tune in next week. <laughs> they had the whole thing, love, yeah. of, and the dude just, he just moved the, his arm. And, I mean, yeah. that's how fucking stupid we were. You couldn't uh, wait. Yeah, anything. You yeah, couldn't yeah. wait till fucking next week. He moved. No, he didn't. What's Fuck he moving you. He moved. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> then he'd fall out of the chair was the big, I mean, crazy, yeah. man. Like, and, and they did it in a way where you couldn't wait for the next. Soupy Sales. Que la verga. Soupy Sales. Great show. Soupy Sales. Yeah. Hola, hola, hola. Yeah. Yo, what yeah, did? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I think we should not forget. You know, and YouTube has all that stuff. Yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. I love it. I, I go, I, I, I'm on YouTube an, an awful lot. You know, if you believe in like, in like energy, you would believe that if you went back to the things that made you happy, that, that they should still make you happy. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I'm gonna do a deep dive. Exactly. Exactly. You know what the worst thing? You know what the worst thing that some dude said to me? We we're playing golf. He said, "You ever watch, you know, Red Tube?" I said, "What's that? You don't watch Red Tube?" I said, no, dude, what's that? Like porn? I said, I don't watch porn, motherfucker. I'm married. 
Man, I went back and watched Red Troop. I'm <laughs> 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 fucking driving. Oh, hey, Joe Lopez. Hey, fucking met follower the fucking <laughs> My number three button on my phone. Get you out of there. This, I mean, this is the see, worst thing. Eh? This is the first. See, I learned something new. This is the first time I've heard of Red Troop. Uh, don't look. Yeah, <laughs> don't check your search history. Don't, yeah. No, serious, don't look. That really to everybody that's listening to this, don't. if, if, if it's not in your life, if you don't yeah. think that you'll become anything about it, the don't, don't look at That's it. That's Pandora's exactly. box. Keep the things in your life that make you happy, not make you over there, you know, then you and your wife. You know, you know this dude told me that he was a musician <laughs> and in a, in a pretty big band, and he said to me, you just got married? And I said, yes. I think I've ever said this publicly. He goes, can I give you some advice? And I said, yeah. He goes, just make sure your dick gets hard for home games as much as it does for away games. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh... <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, I couldn't remember the shit you said about uh, you know getting I mean? old. The f- I'm laughing my ass off the other day. You said something about people getting old, married couples, and now sex is going up and shaking hands. <laughs> you can't get wet, I can't get hard. Uh, <laughs> let's get the same haircut and travel. Let's go see Jordan Lopez at the Microsoft. <laughs> I said, don't let your wife suck your dick. You, you, know, you want your wife to put her mouth on something that pisses out of her for 70 <laughs> The same haircut. <laughs> the same, you know, you see them too. One time, uh-huh. when I first started to see couples with the same haircut, I was in Lanai, I had a house in Lanai, and these, these, these two people got off the course. He walked right into the bar and said, how'd you guys play today? And I was like, the fucking lady, eh? <laughs> I, was like, lady. <laughs> I thought they were fucking dudes, man. They go, that's t- I go, I have tits. <laughs> no, fuck her. They go, you didn't see that she had tits? I go, they're fucking they're not bigger than mine. Uh, <laughs> it's always interesting seeing couples that look exactly the same. I always see that oh. at Disneyland. I always see that at Disneyland. It's always but like the same. you know how the people say that they look like they're fucking dogs? They do, yeah, man. They, they really do. do. How do fucking people end up looking like they're dogs? I don't know. My dog got a skinny white one, not me. <laughs> <laughs> how long have you had your dog? A uh, year in February. And uh, when you go home, is he happy to see you? Oh, yeah. You, when he sees me coming, he starts whimpering, uh-huh. and he gets all excited. R- start fucking running around until I open that, that door. And- Remember that joke they said? They go, you think dog's a man best friend? He goes, lock your wife in the trunk of your car yeah. for 10 minutes and lock your dog. <laughs> and open the trunk and see who's happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Why do you think wives take a take a – you have a girlfriend? I do have a girlfriend, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been together for like about uh, uh, five years now. Where'd you meet her? In the, where'd you meet her? In, the, in a biotech – <laughs> yeah, 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 no, exactly. So where would you guys meet, though? Uh, we, we actually met at a concert uh, when we were in high school through a mutual friend, and then we caught up again when she moved to L.A. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? What? No. I don't know. I, I don't even know what he's laughing. I, 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 I talked about Spongebob, <laughs> now about meeting my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 yeah. Uh, so, so did she live out here, or, or? No, she lived in Fontana, then she moved to L.A. Yeah. Is a white girl? No, no, oh. also Latina. Yeah, she was not on meth. She has all her teeth. Yeah, she has all her teeth. Fontana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I call it like Fontucky or something like they that. Do call like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's that's when you start that. to smoke chemicals, you're like, oh, we're getting close to Fontana. We're gonna let you out right <laughs> out <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, so, um, yeah. how is it to? I mean, I don't know, man, because it's like you're talking to somebody from another. You know, they land here. So, so, yeah. what is it like now? You guys don't live together. You have your own place? My girlfriend and I? Yeah, uh, we, we live together. I, I live with my grandparents at the moment. I'm taking care of them right yeah, now, yeah, so we live in the same space. We have, like, our, our own um, spot and everything. They have their there. facilities? They have yeah, all their they, they have all the things that they need. So, um, yeah, we, we have, like, a pretty good arrangement there. Is, are any of them on uh, adult? You know, my grandmother would, would need a, uh, diapers. And, but my grandma's very vain, so yeah. she would say protective garments. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she would yeah. correct me. Yeah. So, you know, that's the house that she grew up in. I said... Well, just go down there and not and don't forget to get the diapers. And from the hallway around the corner in the room that I grew yeah. up in, she'd go protect them garments. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she could fucking hear diapers from a mile away. <laughs> if you were at the car and go, oh, so don't forget grandma's pet. Protect them. I mean, <laughs> and you know, it's funny, man, because as they get older, yeah. Like I knew my grandmother was, I mean, frail, and she was very vain, and and. But it's funny, when I looked at her in person, I still kind of in my head maybe filled in the blanks of what, I, of what might have been missing. You know, when, yeah. you, when you see somebody, you don't see them as they are, you see them as you think they are. Yeah. And then uh, Brian, you know, came to my house one time and I said, uh, let's take a picture with my grandmother. And I took a picture with my grandmother and she 
looked. She didn't have her teeth in, and she was probably, man, like under 100 pounds. And mm-hmm. if I looked at her, I wouldn't have seen her like that. Yeah, and until yeah. I saw that picture, I saw what what she really looked like. Like in my in my mind, I, sure. I filled her out in the parts that she was missing. Sure. Again, you see the perspective I'd afterwards. The, yeah. You're like, oh man. Like a, yeah. a, like a picture is a picture, but in my head, like you maybe you you know you you we color, we fill in the missing parts. You know. And that's so true too. Yeah. I mean, it, I feel like it happens a lot too. Like in, in my space, where I'm like, oh. But I, well, you, you take care of them every day, right? I take care of them every day, yeah. So, um, just I, I was always, I feel like when I was a kid, I was annoyed by like how overprotective they were. But then as I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, that's just how they are because they care. And they don't want me to be like what my parents were when they were younger, you know. So yeah. it like all comes from like a place of love, but they don't know how to like put it in a delicate way. You know? And they still they're still married too, right? They're still married. How long yeah, have they been married uh, for like over forty years. They always talk shit to each other about mm-hmm. being married. They're like we're married forty six years. You don't even take me outside, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah outside. Not even for a walk <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah, my grandma just likes to talk shit at this point, getting her age. You know, she also thinks like everything bad that happens on the news is happening everywhere. You know. Um, yeah, the Spanish news really has rotted her brain in that regard. <laughs> what, what does she have? The, the Spanish news has oh, like yeah. really like oh. fucked up her brain, dude. One time, you know, James Hahn, uh, uh, when he was running against Vera Gosa, um, uh, did a commercial where a guy was smoking crack that, you know, he, I guess, I don't know, he endorsed letting people out of jail. So mm. when I went to my grandmother's house, she said, did you see that the guy, como se llama? Okay, he, he smokes crack. And I said, who smokes crack? The guy running for mayor, Vera Gosa, I said, yeah. I said, Grandma, he's not smoking crack. He goes, there's a commercial on TV mm-hmm. that says that he smoked, and, and she didn't vote for him because of the commercial Yeah, that she said that in the, she believed was in the commercial and not like a Willie Horton commercial mm-hmm. that, he smoked, that he smoked crack. And it was just a James Hahn yeah. anti-Vera Gosa. Well, he won anyways, but... I don't think he, you know he lost that one and won the second time. It, it does so much damage too, like the way that like they they consume like media and everything like that. Like in that same space of the of the news outlet that they watch, they watch this one called Alex Tremo, the extreme. Like that's like the, the <laughs> super crazy oh. one. Like they have like exorcisms and everything on it. You know, oh, wow. what uh, is that? Alex Tremo. Uh, Alex Tremo. It's like it, it's it's one of those things that's on like at, I think like at nine o'clock at night. Like so that and, just and before it, you sleep, you can have a nightmare. Like that's basically what they make it. <laughs> and every night they watch it. Yeah, every night they what watch it. What if you it. stood in front of the TV? They would be like. Fuck out. They're like, you see, this is what happens, you know. Like they'll just keep warning me. <laughs> um, I, I hate when they like do like the things where they see like the beat in the Guadalupe and something because my grandma ends up staring at stuff for too long trying to find like that. Right here on my her, toast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right toast, yeah. When I say yeah. we come from a culture that believes that a statue in Mexico cries tears of blood, yeah, yeah. but won't believe that you and the girl from work are just friends. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said that on Channel Five. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And they all laughed. They all laugh. They, yeah, they, they knew. The side, yeah. 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 yeah, they knew back in the station. Like to me, like to. Me, that in my in, you know in, in my working of the culture, yeah, it that is the one I would say. What joke have you written that defines what you think of the culture? And I think is that they think that yeah. a statue either grows hair, cries tears, or cries tears of blood, or moves, but won't believe that you and the girl from work are just we're <laughs> just, <laughs> just friends. friends. You know, they just man, fucking. I remember there was a, a restaurant called El Gato on Sepulveda, mm. great place. <laughs> They pull it down over there. El Gato's on the command. They don't have any more El Gato's. And I went with some people from work in these open booths. And then my fucking girlfriend shows up and she puts her hand on the table like, fucking, this is where you are. And I was in the middle, so I couldn't get out. <laughs> and and she just drove around to to restaurants until she found El Gato at the office of Oh, my God. But, I mean... Crazy man, like yeah. out of their minds. Yeah. I mean, it still happens, though, huh? I think it still happens. Yeah, but, that, uh, but on social media, you leave a bigger footprint than you did when you were true. Just you know, hey, you know, parking your car around the corner so nobody could see it, yeah. or put your hood. My friend, man, would go crazy, dude. He would go to my his girlfriend's house and put his hand on her hood, and he'd go, "Okay, we're good." I said, "What you mean?" He goes, "She's been home because it's not hot." Oh like, my god, like, that's how bad it got. Ooh. To where he would. We would drive by his house, turn the lights off, roll up. He'd get out and go put his hands on the hood of her car, and then come back and say, "Okay." One of my partners, uh, we were and, and dear friend of mine. He retired and went into PI business. How come your friends that you can't say name? I say friends name of my. Well, friend. I can't. I can say it. His, his yeah, name yeah. is Gil Parra. You mm-hmm. know, he he was my partner. He retired. I was supposed to take over his business. You know, hey, I'm going to run a year. When you're ready to go, you can have it. Doing PI work. 
So he did it, and he used to tell people, women would come to him, hey, I want you to check up on my husband because I think he's cheating on me. And he'd say, save your money. You think he's cheating on me? He is. Ah. <laughs> Before you even spend your money, hey, you want proof? I'll give you proof. But I'm telling you, if it's already that point where you think he is, he is. Would you Would you allow your girlfriend to look through your phone? Uh, I think I would, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Would you? I'm not seeing anyone, but no. <laughs> Yeah, I'd let her boundaries. I, no. Well, also, yeah, boundaries. Yeah, I, I would, but also, I'm not going to let this person do it because of boundaries. Um, you know, yeah. but but also, you know, I think now is, is what, what is, do you guys have the same interests and stuff like that? Like, um, yeah, I mean, we, we have similar interests and stuff. We both like. Does like, she drink or not drink? She drinks. Yeah, yeah. So she drinks. Uh, we like going to like uh, art museums and stuff like that. Flea she markets. Weed or anything? Uh, she yeah she'll like she has like a vape and stuff like that. That's um, a, but I mean yeah. if you if you I mean, I'm, I'm still trying I'm still trying to put together. She drinks, she smokes a little weed. <laughs> yeah, we go to an art museum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, of course. I mean, but yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you no. ever seen a Picasso high? <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, I love it. Yeah, but uh, that I never took a girl to art museum. God, it has to be a, like something has to be happening. I think at the museum because I can't just like stare. What's at going on over there long. by the Brits? Like the Tupac? Uh, is there a Tupac exhibit over there? Over at LA Live, yeah, they're having yeah. like a, a Tupac exhibit right now. What's um, it? What's in there? I think it just has like some of his like poetry and oh. like some other like uh, artifacts from his life. From my hotel, I could see down below. Wake me when I'm free. It said, and then uh, yeah, I saw Tupac in the. Uh, that's how old I am. I saw Tupac driving in a two-door Mercedes by himself with a with his do rag and the thing. And I was like, "Bet he went." You know. uh, no <laughs> way. Yeah, that's tight. Do you go to museums and stuff like that, or you know what? what do you like to do I, in, in like your free I time? Went to Europe. I, I, I play golf. Yeah, I'm playing golf since 1981. Oh, nice. Um, I, I'm at home trying to learn songs that I first started to play in 1977, mm. and then I collect guitars and you know li- I like music and yeah, you know. I took a big vacation. Went to Europe. They wanted to go. To, my wife wanted to go to the Louvre. Did you go? Oh. No, I didn't. Oh. And, I, and I told the wife, "We didn't go." Well, some of our friends did, and then I, I didn't. I said, "I told my wife." I said, "Hey, we've been married this long, dear." I said, "We have museums. We can go anywhere we want to." Back now, dude. You what did you do never instead? once asked me to go to a, a museum, but now you, are you, you didn't go. You didn't go into the Louvre. No. I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't. My, <laughs> my friends that went, they said it was elbow to elbow, asshole mm. to elbow. They have the uh, we, Venus wing Venus. They have the Mona Lisa in there. Yeah. The Mona Lisa. Yeah. Six of my friends went. Only one of them got close enough to see the Mona Lisa, and they said, Gil, it was only this fucking big. Uh, overrated. It's, it's, not very it's big, a but little. No, but it's still. And and so I can look at it in a magazine. Hey, when, that, when you yeah, see that's it, the same broad. Well, you know. Dude, that's the same broad. Hey, so you so you you don't you don't uh, you don't get a, a a sense of accomplishment like standing if you went to Rome and standing in the Colosseum, no, or sitting in the Vatican. No, now now, I love going through the would, Colosseum. Would you? Would I? Would I would if you went to Europe, like, would, uh-huh. and if you went to Venice and did a gondola, or you went to Rome and sat in the Vatican, would it mean? something to you it would mean something to me because i got to do something that most people don't get to do and i think that's a privilege i, in that, I got you know? to go i had a better time going to see where the, the americans landed normandy mm-hmm. uh-huh. that now that was touching them that was important that's, to me yeah. on the other on the other side i don't know if they landed there but my I mean, wife <laughs> they still have those metal Yes. Those things that they couldn't get through, like those kind of things that were put in the sand, yes. those crossings. Oh, that was, they, they that's that awful. My my wife, on the other hand, right after we left the Vatican, we got back into the limo or whatever was driving us around, she cried like a baby. And she just says, thank you. I can never thank you enough. Oh, uh-huh. This was all we're just seeing the Vatican because she's a very... She really Did she go to the lady. catacombs under? Where, uh, they have the po- where they have the other people buried the post? No, under? no. no. Oh, wow. But she was just so moved by it, so that made the whole trip worthwhile. Yeah. That in and of itself. It's but the rest of the shit I can look at it on the Discovery. You, so you channel. went into the Vatican. Yes. Have you been to the Vatican? I've never been to the Vatican. I've You've actually been never Europe? been out of the U.S. Yeah. yeah. You, should, you should. Oh, if your girlfriend sure. loves art. I yeah, mean, yeah. You go in the Louvre, or you go see uh, the David. You know, it's in Florence. The Mar- I, I got yeah. to see uh, uh, Notre Dame. Went to see uh, <laughs> Notre Dame. The, the you mean Notre Cathed- Dame <laughs> Cathedral of Notre Dame? I, I went to the uh, the was it the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. yeah. When yeah. I was in front of the Eiffel Tower, some guy comes by and says, "Hey, 
He says, uh, Gil Creel. And I said, yes. He says, you I'm a fugitive. He says, you don't remember me. He says, I'm a defense attorney. He <laughs> says, I went against you in a trial. And I said, oh, this is going to get ugly. I said, he says, hey, don't worry. You won. He said, it was really good. And then you saw a guy in front of the Eiffel yeah, Tower. he recognized me. Oh, and crazy. he was with a guy that was with a, uh, a de- uh, deputy district attorney from here. And so no way. met him right in front of the no, Eiffel Tower. Over. I don't think so. They They, they were just... Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Know, I, I saw in, in Notre Dame. <laughs> I saw a guy that I shared an office with it, when I was working for the sheriff. Is that all in Paris? The Louvre is in Paris, right? The Louvre is yeah. in Paris. Yeah, right there in the thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's another big ass cathedral, and, and you know me, I to can't Versailles, remember. Versailles, bro. No, Go no. To Versailles. Over Versailles. when I went to Italy, there was another big cathedral. What's that one? Oh, the Spanish the, steps, all um, that thing. The Basilica? What's it? The Basilica. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it Florence? Where's the Basilica in? Uh... That's in the Vatican, right? It's where. No, no, no. I no, went no, to no, London. No. I went to in Westminster Italy. Abbey. Oh, let me see. So that. now, when you see like uh, uh, where Prince Charles and and, uh, and Diana got married, yeah. is right there, you know. Um, and I mean, there's Da Vinci's like just in a church, man. Like, My wife was excited going cool. to see where Kennedy got shot. You know, we were right yeah. there, mm-hmm. took her there through the whole thing, and and, yeah. and it was it was it was That's tough. A that's, uh, the, the, that was nice. That that's was a cool. tough one, and and, yeah, and uh, with the X on the street, and it's not that, it's not that far, uh, but I think there's you know conspiracy. I, I believe the conspiracies there. They have a mark on the street. Uh, mm. Oh wow! Oh, wow. I've, I've I've read so much on it and the bullet trajectories and stuff because you know I'm into that stuff, <laughs> and it, it's a tough one. E- even, um, but you, were you an officer when Robert Kennedy got shot? No, no. Because I, there's a. I was in high school when. Uh, I remember the assembly when they told us. There's a there's oh, a woman that they saw in a polka dot dress that there's a whole conspiracy behind that shooting as well. For RFK? Um, mm. I didn't know that. Was she wearing a Monica Lewinsky dress? I don't think there was any crema on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but this you was... know, everything is not, I mean, everything's not as it seems, you know, in that yeah. time. I mean, CIA and... Probably should stop talking about. It. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be back at your house. Yeah, the secret Shh. service is coming back. <laughs> I think I'm too strong. I don't think I got one more, but yeah. So those are the things that um, um, interest you, like you know, museums, and I think that's yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like just being able to to see other things because that also kind of like uh, shapes the things that I want to talk about and the things that I want to like pursue when when, when creating things, you know. Um, yeah, like Were we, you an artist? Did you draw at all or anything? I wish I could draw. I mean, whenever I would like uh, send uh, letters to like my my uncle or my dad in prison, they'd like come back and they'd have like those like crazy elaborate drawings. Oh, on I the know, front. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I always be like, man, like I wish I could draw like this. You know? <laughs> but you know the fucking cholos, man. Like you look at Mr. Cartoon. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. When he Mr. Cartoon was in junior high, they told him that he was weird because he could draw. Like they made him feel inferior, and he yeah. didn't draw for like four years. But also, like those cholos, man, they're, they're they're talented. They're great talented, artists. Yeah. Talented like painters be, and 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 yeah, you know, like I I'd see like those black books. Sometimes kids would take yeah. like black books to school, and you'd open it up and you'd see them like practicing their tags and stuff like that. And you'd be like, "This is really good. You should share this with other people." A good buddy of mine, Ray, who's never been to the joint, you'd think that he'd been to the joint for years. He does a lot of stuff with pencil. Beautiful mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, beautiful stuff. And so there was a guy that uh, that. You know, I go to San Fernando Elementary School and give toys, and I, and there was a girl that her grandfather, she said, I think you know my grandfather, and she said the name, and I said, yeah, I do. And I said, what is he What is he doing now? And he, he murdered somebody, yeah. and he is doing life in San Quentin. But this kid was like, you see me, he was, he was an artist, father was an architect, and he was an artist, and he was getting bullied, and he, and he, kill somebody that was bullying him wow. and he went to he went away but I mean this dude is like the least person like when she told me that I couldn't believe it but then I could believe it yeah. that that guy would do something like that and, and just had probably enough. satisfied yeah probably said not, not not one bit sorry he did it fuck man I mean bullied that long. and he used to do like we're in a night like in the 60s he would draw the Apollo rocket with a pencil like his father he could just Damn. so good at it man like so good at That's it, crazy. and the way that he used to hold a pencil just kind of make these little marks, like like this guy that did this. this. There's so much technique in that too, like the oh. shadows and everything. Like it's it's amazing to be Cheech able to do Cheech and Rudy Moreno over there. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 what time is you're it? Are we good? You're killing me. Yeah, yeah. What time is we it? We got, uh, what time is it? One thirty. so we got, or one thirty-five. so we got a little bit more time. Are we going to wrap her up? What time did we start at, 12? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 12? yeah, 12. Yeah, we've been going for a solid I, 90 I came minutes. in at 12.03, you'd have thought I came in at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The, uh, mm. do you, are you, uh, <laughs> I know we were ready to hammer you. So, so uh, yeah. wh- what, what I, you know, what idea do you have for the future of your career? Oh, yeah, I feel like But do you I, believe in manifest destiny? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, well, I, I like manifesting and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like if you yeah. And the expansion and the expansion of the, of the West. States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are um, you really is Latino? That, manifest destiny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. And when I did the Why You Crying special uh, in 2005, and the, when the DVD came out, I sat and did a half hour uh, special of just me being interviewed, and everything I said in that half hour came true. That's wow. awesome. That's amazing. They asked me what I wanted to do, and I mean everything that I've wanted to do, I've. I've done, but I yeah. think it's manifest destiny. Um, I, I I would love to uh, be able to have a career where I can just like tour and, and things like that. You know, I would like to be able to have um, specials and albums that like really signify different chapters of my life and things like that. So I have like a good library where people can see like, oh, this is like the beginning. This yeah. is where like things have changed and stuff like that. Because I feel like that would really demonstrate my growth as an artist, yep. and that's something that I always want to be able to do is to grow and get better, and not just like have only one good thing. You know. Um, if we're like talking like like large scale and everything, you know, I'd love to uh, buy back part of the block. You know, I'd love to be able to like buy back some of the stuff that's changed in my neighborhood yeah. and create like an art center or something where people can really benefit and share their talents as well. You know, I, there's this really awesome thing that I've heard where you know, uh, but you could start your phone. You could start a foundation and do that. Yeah, I could. Yeah, uh, there's this thing that I always think of where it's like talent is spread evenly throughout the world, opportunity is not, and I think of that so much, and I feel like that would be such a great thing to. To manifest a place where people can create uh you know this is like dreaming big but like i would love to like be in consideration for like a grammy or something at some point with like my work and and yeah um just creating content and being as good as i can be yeah yeah as, yeah, as long, long as, as he's not, not a weird al here <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i never lost to a comedian i was nominated three times i didn't win I lost to Weird Al, I lost to Flight of the Concords, and I lost to Stephen Colbert. I never lost to a comedian. Damn, dude. What is Stephen Colbert considered? I know his show, but what is he considered? I did an hour and a half live special in San Antonio in front of almost 16,000 people, and he did a half hour special for Comedy Central uh, for Christmas. Isn't he like a character? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh right. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was won. not a standard like comedy special. That's all. insane, man. Oh my and God. The first year I was at Pebble Beach playing golf, they said, you're going to go back? And I said, I don't know. And then somebody said, that Weird Al always wins. I said, I'm not going. And then the one I was in, uh, America's Mexican, I didn't win. And then I didn't go to the ceremony. And then nine, I went there, and they had us all on TV, and I fucking lost. Just like, fuck. What, what did it feel like for you to be nominated? Like, what, what did that, you know? Um, you know, I don't think any, you know, for writing on... Yeah those little notebooks or writing on gas company or envelopes from you know from bills yeah i would say that it's an honor to be to be nominated three times and and now when i won an emmy for a voiceover that i did for the dodgers like an la emmy that's awesome and on the same in in 18 30 years after my grandfather died and and that was a year that my grandfather said in spring training the dodgers are going to win and they weren't very good Mm -hmm. and i said bullshit and he died opening day and then they won and I got an Emmy for oh, that wow. World Series, which means almost like if it was sent to me. Yeah, you know, that's amazing. Yeah, Damn. yeah. I remember when I was in Houston because you had to wait till the next morning because of the news. There wasn't, you know, all that news we have now. Yeah. And I was in the apartment by myself, and I was I was crying because they won, and I was like, man, I was yeah. telling them that they won, you know. And then thirty years later, yeah. I do this voiceover for me and Sam Jackson, and yeah. Sam, it's the only Emmy Sam Jackson's ever won. Wow! <laughs> and he's like, "Shit, I, you know." And then I have it at the house. I look at it every day. My dad was such a Dodger fan. <laughs> he was. He was. Is he such a fan that he would leave in the seventh inning if they were losing one? Never. Like my grandfather would. Like, Fuck! They're gonna lose. Let's go. <laughs> he was. He had tra- at that time transistor radios all over yep, the house. Yeah. Three in his in his truck. One time he got. He got in trouble with my mom because she thought he had an earache. He had the wire running up there <laughs> at, a, at a Rosario, at a Rosary, <laughs> sitting there like this, listening to the yeah. game. He, he was suffering and, and died from cancer. 
March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. And my dad always said, they said, hey, Mexican, get over here and do this. He said, I'm not Mexican, smoked Irish. Just a little well done. <laughs> and he died on St. Patrick's Day. Wow. So I'm coming up, Dad, how are you doing today? He says, well, he says, I'm not doing too good. He said, but it doesn't make any difference. He said, ain't no reason. The Dodgers are having a bad spring training. He says, the Dodgers are going to com- continue playing the way they are right now. He says, ain't no reason to continue living. <laughs> he says, they got to turn it around. Wow. And, and he was a he was a big time Dodger fan. I think they, you know, my grandfather. I think they might show. I don't think they're, I don't think anybody's like this anymore. But they love those teams so much, yeah. and they show more love to them to their family. Like my grandfather didn't go <laughs> yeah. to my fucking high school graduation, yeah. and he was listening to fucking Dodgers, man. <laughs> In my family, because of my dad, you know, back then they used to have these nylon jackets, a big Dodger jacket. Oh yeah, 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 sure. Okay. So we didn't have a bunch of money, so. Got one for my mom, got one for my dad, and then everybody's birthday throughout the year, everybody chip in their money and buy their sister, the man, till everybody in the family had the blue jackets. That's cool. All sit yeah, together. That's cool. Yeah. It's a big deal. It was. There's yeah. all love for sports teams, you know, because we. Uh, what are your teams? Uh, Lakers, Dodgers, uh, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, biotech company in Westminster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- those are like the, the teams that we grew up with and stuff like that. Are you Lakers or Clippers? Uh, Lakers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How can anybody be a Clipper fan uh, hey, in Los man. Angeles? It, it's I don't weird. Get it. it's, it's weird to like see. I saw someone's bumper sticker coming over here. They're Clippers, Dodgers, and then. Um, no. Yeah, it was like you're. You know, if you go Clippers, Dodgers, it's almost like you're in Vegas and you're like, oh, I got a 7 7 and a. Oh, fucking cherry. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can't be. You can't be. <laughs> it shocks me how many Mexicans are follow you, the Lakers the way they do. I you, know. you don't see too many tall. I mean, none of them. They're all so short. They don't play. They don't <laughs> play basketball. Yeah. And I never got into the game. The best part of basketball is the last two minutes of the game. You know, I would say that you know, growing up watching, you know, Will Chamberlain and Kareem and everybody. That. Yeah. yeah. It's not that I don't like the Lakers now. It's that when you manufacture a team instead of a team just happening that you end up with seasons like this where you know I love Anthony Davis I love LeBron. those guys are great but it's like we manufactured a team it didn't win when they had Carl Malone and Gary Payton and yep. you know those guys but those years with Kobe and Tan you know friend of the family and things like that like I I don't think I'll ever walk into the crypto.com arena ever again in my life yeah I don't yeah. see. I don't see yeah. myself walking. Back. I I was a. F- I used to love him back then. I mean, I wasn't basketball. I never was a big basketball. But guys like the guys you met, Elgin Baylor. Yes. Will Chamberlain. Yeah. Jerry he, West. Jerry the West. Best. The logo. The you know, best. These the guys were. The be- Jerry West yeah. is the nicest person. How he built. I mean, he got he got us Kobe. But then he's been the general manager of other teams when he should have been our guy forever almost. You know. Yep. And then Dr. Buss, there's that whole miniseries starting, you know, that's going to be on HBO. Yeah, but yeah. I knew him, and then, you know, I went to the games when, when uh, all that was happening, and that's the kind of owner I would be if I owned uh, a final sports team. Yeah. You all right? I'm good. You get your results from your CAT scan? That's color? it. And said go back to the free clinic. <laughs> yeah. How was really it? Beautiful, good. huh? Hey, man. Yeah. Hey. It's awesome to meet Thanks you, dude. So I wish you the best on your career, and... Uh, it you was know. a pleasure. Hey, great it really to meet was. You. Always Thank do what makes you happy, me. brother. Keep writing and keep banging, and I look forward to seeing your special. Yeah. I appreciate you both. Thanks for having me on. And uh, please tell the people where, where to follow you, where to find your stuff. Poquito like nerdy. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great uh, handle. Um, uh, you can follow me on IG and TikTok, Vince Caldera. Um, that's V I N C E C A L D E R A. I'm sure it'll be like in the bio and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll link it. My, my special will be at the Bob Baker Marionette Theater, uh, May 10th and May 12th, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. each day. Awesome. Thanks I don't for think out. I'm going to be in town, but I would go if I was there. If I was in town, oh, yeah. I would go. I'll send you. I'll send you the video. Send, send, you yeah, yeah. Get like you on the next it. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Gil will be there and fucking ruin the whole. Ah! <laughs> 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 you don't know if he's laughing because you're bombing or you're laughing because he's fucking. You know. <laughs> You know, there was, there's always people that yeah. laugh that loud in shows, you know, and you would be like, yeah. hey, go over there and tell that lady, you know, not to be laughing so loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then this guy would go over there and go, hey, Jordan Lopez told me to, t- told me to tell you to shut the fuck mm-hmm. up. I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, that happened to me in Arizona where I asked the guy to tell the lady to just, you know. Who was it? Louis Anderson. I went to see him 
Uh, I lectured back at the FBI One Academy the in uh, Quantico. And I went to he go was see in Virginia. Him. He was in Virginia. I went to see him. He's great. And so I went back there to see him and had front row seats. And at the end of the show, he comes up to the table. He says, God damn, thank you a lot. Man, I could hear you laughing. And <laughs> then he found out, he says, hey, you know, too bad you're not from around here. He says, I'm going to be back here next week. I said, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to be back in L.A. He says, I'm going to be in L.A. next month. <laughs> he says, come on out. Seats are on me. He wanted you to keep your Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. How does Bob Saget hit his head that bad and go to sleep? Is that, have you ever seen anything like that? Well, you, it, it, it's not impossible. That's why they tell you, whenever you get hit in the head, you have a concussion, don't let them go to sleep. But they said it was mm-hmm. like, a, like a serious, well, what, what would cause that? If you hit your head, it, uh, falling in the bathroom? Well, they, they, or, you'd have to look this at a serious it. fracture, though, right? It, well, I didn't see the fracture. I didn't pay attention to the autopsy report. They have real people looking at that thing. You hit it back at the base of the skull, down at the bottom of it. Okay, that's where everything comes up, the stem comes yeah, up yeah. into the brain. So you hit it, and once you get into the brain, your, your brain is in a sack of water, like, and it's fluid. So you get hit back here. They, they have something that's called coup and contra coup. So you hit it back here, and it'll bruise on the front uh, uh, because it shakes back and forth. So who wow. knows how much it takes, how long it takes, whether it's fractured or not, because you can fracture your skull and not die. Yeah. So you just... Right, that's Th- a, they're doctors. I'm not. Wow, man. That's, but they say it, and and it's tragic. But there was nothing in him, so he's good. And I, I gotta know, believe man. what it's they just say. A thing to say, you know, like yeah. like, uh, you know, we've been in hotel rooms forever. If you sure, you know, almost fall or you, I've, I've fallen before in rooms that you, you know, you would naturally, if you're in your room, you're gonna go to sleep. You're yeah. by yourself, yeah, of course. You're gonna go to sleep, which that, is what I think nat- what he did. That's right, that's a natural thing yeah. to do. I I can remember as much as I laugh. I had been. And bibing yeah. all night long. Yeah. I was in Reno, and I was in the shower, stepped out of the shower, and when I stepped out of the shower, there was a tub with an enclosure. I stepped out, the left foot hit the floor, and slid. Yeah. And I started to go down, and I tried to grab the, the sliding door, ripped the shit out yeah. of my arm here. I went down, hit, hit the floor, and as soon as I hit the floor, nobody else was in the room. The first thing I did was just go, safe! <laughs> and I started laughing. And I started laughing at myself. <laughs> then I got myself up. Man, so. that shit's it's dangerous, man. That's I think it's you know I knew we you know you know him and you you hear what happened. You see, he was we were in here, and it's just he it was just it's, it's, last month, a couple of months ago, when you were doing your thing in here with him. I know, man. Yeah, that's a trip. Wow, that that's crazy. You know that yeah. that's what it what it was. It was like late in. November, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, yeah just recently. Wow. All right. Okay, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Vince. Thank you.